Vegeta, what does the scouter say about their subscriber count? It's 9,010. Wait, so you mean? Yes, Nappa. It's... It's... It's over! It's over? It's over 8,000! What eight... Wait, what? There is a story so strange in its implications that it defies ordinary classification. I don't care if you've been waiting for cannon busters all night. If you up, smash that like button. Welcome to Black and the Black Times Infinity. I'm your host. Dude, to come to you live and direct from the stack. Smoke me out, fam, with that tank shit. On my left, old ninja in the world, old ninja. Sometimes you can get, go into dankness overload. Mm, on my far right, engineering on the ones and twos, stuff leads out on the threes and fours products. I'm about to turn 40. My ball's about to drop. It's going to be great. Oh, shit. Last but not least, we got your boy, Blue. Dude, it's hotter than Satan's left nut sack. Sure yeah, <laughs> sure Holy is. shit. Stitches in the wind. Helping, uh, doing some, some fatherly shit. He went vigilante. There we go. Why are you lying? There we mm -hmm. go. He, he, went to go pack of, he went to go pick up a pack of Newports. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Oh, you know, he'll be right back. <laughs> Damn. Damn. All right, so listener of the week would be uh, Scott Malak. Pippins? No. Malak K. Sure. Macaulay Colton? No, definitely not him. Oh. It'd be cool if he did watch, though. It would be. Get the word out. He's, He's got an interesting back. That he does. Uh, and I can't tell you he's in the chat room because I don't have it open right now. But right. it's, it's coming up because YouTube is all fucking wonky now with, with creator shit. Okay. YouTube, YouTube Creator Studio now sucks. God damn, there's go a lot all, going on with that. I gotta it? click all these fucking buttons to get to like basic shit. It's fucking retarded. Mm. So it's, it's coming up. Alright, right, here we go, here we go. Oh, you got it? Uh, my boy Mike, what's going on? And he's uh, he's up in here. And we appreciate you for watching live. Uh, if you go to, I forget his, he, he does a Twitch channel. Oh, okay. I think it's called Xtats. Pretty sure. Well, put it. Uh, put your link in there, yeah, Mike. Mike, put put up your uh, your Twitch page, and then uh, we'll get some folks watching you. Hell he, yeah. he has a veteran. He has a veteran team. Hmm. Of what? Or, um, he, he, play, well, he plays uh, games. Oh. And he has a vet team. Like oh. they're full of vets. Does he, uh, does he specialize though, in fighting games, FPS? Or? Uh, FPS is mostly, I, okay. I believe. But uh, I think he's got an Overwatch team together and a few other ones too. He plays a bunch of games on, on Twitch. Good. But we uh, we serve together in the Marine Corps. We're in. Ninth Com Battalion, otherwise known as Ninth Crime Battalion, because uh, when I first got in, there was a huge drug bust and it was terrible. But uh, he was a good dude. We, we hung out a lot. We had a lot of fun ass parties in Riverside. This is a uh, kind of a crazy story, but uh, when a, a friend of ours, uh, their aunt bought a house in Riverside and it used to be owned by by Disney. So it like had, Walt Disney? Yeah, well, it was owned by like the Disney company. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So like the backyard had like this crazy backyard with like waterfalls and shit, wow. and like a walk-in pool and a fucking jacuzzi that also overflowed into the fucking um, pool. It, it, is Riverside in like Riverside County? Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. It's, it's like the biggest. I'm pretty sure it's one of the biggest cities in that county. But uh, we would we would go to that house on Friday party like every fucking Friday and then on Saturday morning we get up early because we were all part of this uh, this thing called uh, Vita and I forget the actual the acronym for it now because it's been a long time but basically if you ever watched uh, like Maury Povich or something like that and mm -hmm. you saw kids that were getting yelled at like scared straight yeah. and those guys that were wearing like black camo oh yeah yeah we were those guys nice for like a year or more and so we would just get we would get fucked up drunk and then we'd get up in the morning irritated and kind of hung over <laughs> and then go yell at kids for you know half a day Nice. Before Sony stole that name and turned it into that shitty handheld. All right. <laughs> Old Ninja, what you got? Uh, usually you pour out some type of malt beverage. Yeah. We'll pour out some Zima. Ooh. God damn. For, uh, that is malt. Yeah. For some Barbara, Barbara March. Uh, she's known for Star Trek fame. Hmm. She's part of the, uh, the Klingon sisters, Lursa and Bietor. Uh, they're in a bunch, they're in Star Trek Next Generation, D Space Nine, and the movie Star Trek Generations. Uh, she played, uh, Lursa. She was 65. Oh, she young. died of cancer. Too bad. So, all right, to her. Rest in peace. Anybody else? Mm, not that I saw. God damn, god damn. We got a big ass fucking show for y'all to this week, man. Do we now? Yes, yeah. We, do a, we? we have a Mandingo size show or Hell yeah, it's oh, wait. earthy. So y'all hear about there's another shooting? Uh, and this is the yeah. Philly one. Yeah, there's this is in Philly. Yeah. yeah, apparently uh six officers were shot. 
Yeah, I each one, each of them have been treated and released, but they still had, I guess, one of the suspects barricaded in wherever he was at. Was this a, is this a ongoing hostage situation? I don't I know if there. Tell. I don't know if there was a hostage. I think it was just a standoff for like several hours, and uh, the guy, as far as the last time I saw, it was like half hour ago. He still wasn't caught, apparently. But I guess there's another suspect. I don't know what happened to that suspect, if they were shot, killed, or whatever. So, obviously, if you're listening to this, uh, you know, the next day or something, uh, th- it's breaking news and going on right now on yeah. Wednesday night. So, <clears throat> we'll see what happens. But, yeah. you know, heart you, goes out to all the people shot. Did you guys hear what happened in New York? What happened in At New Times New Square? York? Nah. Yeah. So, yeah. this this is kind of fucked up, but... um. It, it actually, this something happened and it caused a, a major panic in Times Square. I guess there was a motorcycle going by and it was backfiring and it had the same oh, sound yeah, as yeah. gunshot. And they have, you can watch the live video. People are just starting to fucking run. Like even people who were just just chilling there, you saw other people running and they just started running too. So it was like, uh, it was like a. Uh, oh, I can't think of the word. But basically, everybody started running. It started. It created a panic, and everybody basically ran out of Times Square. It was, but it was uh, crazy. A, a motorcycle backfire. Yeah. Oh, all bad. People are scared, man. Yeah, man. I mean, and this was like, I think it was like around last week too. So this is right after the all the shooting in Texas and um and the other place. Oh, California. Yeah, Ohio, California. Man. All fucking bad. All right. Uh, any other updates on? I mean, if you want. The- we're, there's one on here, but we're probably going to talk about it in depth. Well, let's go. What's the one? So, oh, I know you're talking about it. Yeah, so I don't know too much about him, but all I know, everything about him has been fucked up. This is uh, Jeffrey Epstein. Mm. Epstein? Epstein. Mm. Epstein? There's not a U in there. What the fuck? What? What? You said Epstein. Yeah, yeah he's got a lisp. Yeah, there's an E there. Some people pronounce S T E I N as Stein. Mm-hmm. Okay, but you said like up, Einstein. You said Upstein or Epstein. Epstein. Sure. Epstein. Uh, or Epstein. Epstein. Sure. Epstein. Whatever. But it's whatever, definitely not you in the beginning. I, just because there's an E there doesn't mean it's not pronounced that way. That is actually what it means. <laughs> I, have, I have no <laughs> idea. Literally, I don't know literally what it means. Way. Anyway. <laughs> Epstein, Epstein, fuck, fuck around, whatever. He's a piece of shit anyway. So this dude is, was a <laughs> financer, I guess a, a V, uh, what is it? The venture, venture capitalist? capitalist? Billionaire. Yeah, but he's also a convicted sex offender, sex trafficker, yep. pedophile, uh, all around using his white privilege to fuck little kids, saying he doesn't see... Fucking a teenager is a bad thing. Fucking a small kid is a bad thing. Why would you say using his white privilege? Because he hid behind it because he had a lot of money. That's not white privilege. That's money. Is it just money? Well, yes, it's money. It, it's got Bill Cosby did the same fucking thing with money. Oh, no, 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 no. Bill Cosby. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah. I mean, he, he did, did a lot of things. But he, didn't, he, he didn't. money. I just, I don't. He, he, he was I'll, doing this for a while. But his, his money was the big was the big thing. I don't think his ethnicity necessarily was. I mean, he he had a lot of powerful friends. Yeah, that was by his money. He wasn't somebody broke that was just like, oh, I'm, I'm white. Look at me. I can do all this shit. He had fucking money. Yeah, that's true. He it's, had, it's the yeah. money. That's the only reason why he all had, that shit happened. He had a lot of money. There's no doubt about it. I'm not saying power. he didn't. He had a lot of power. That's he where seemed it, like a terrible piece of shit. Yeah, but this seems kind of silly, though. That's where his power came from, was from his fucking money. Well, no, not all of his power came from his money. His, his political friends, obviously. Had how, a, do, how do you think he got all those friends? You thought it was just because he was white? I'm not saying it's all because he's ju- just because he's uh, his ethnicity, but he does have he had a lot of power based on the fact that he had connections with a whole bunch of people. Because he had money, you don't get connections like that unless you have money. You could know so, you could know people who uh, have political power. Not, could, not that fucking level. Get away with that kind of shit. That's uh, that's ri- that's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. All right, let's keep going. Yeah, what, let's what's, keep moving. Okay, once we see a meth head that has that kind of connections, that's broke as shit, then I can see that argument. But that shit never, literally never fucking happens. Do we know any people of color on this level that are pedophiles and billionaires? R. Ke- oh, well, R. Kelly. Well, there's very few. Well, yeah, it's R. Kelly. But R. Kelly's not yeah. a billionaire. He's not, but he sure to use his fucking money as power over those fucking uh, family and fucking kids, didn't he? Well, he went to trial back in the, what, the 90s? He's been convicted already. Yeah. yeah. And R. Kelly should be. He's a piece of shit, too. Yeah. Hold but either. his what I'm saying also is his conviction. I think that was in Florida. Didn't stop him from being able to get away with doing crimes again and again and again. 
Are you talking about Eric Kelly or Jeffrey? No, I'm talking about this guy. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, he, okay. he was convicted of a sex being a sex uh, deviant, a deviant <laughs> sexual predator. Back, I think it was 10 years ago? 10, 11 years ago. Oh, damn. So long before this, he got off easy. Yeah. And so I think that there, there is a lot to say about his political connections. I agree on his money. And possibly even his ethnicity playing a role in him getting off easy after being convicted. Uh, I believe if you have enough money, you can get over a lot of shit. We saw it with people of color as well. We saw it with fucking Bill Cosby. We saw it with, uh, what the fuck's the guy's name? O.J. Simpson. We saw it with R. Kelly. If you have enough money, you can get over a lot of shit. MJ. Yeah, Michael Jackson. We, we list goes fucking on and on. That's yeah. why I like to separate the white privilege bullshit from like me just having fucking a shitload of money. Because yeah. that shitload of money is what buys you all those privileges. MJ never convicted of something. I just want to be clear on that. Yeah, oh, yeah, and we all but know why because they had a shitload of money but i just want to be clear on this even though this guy did have a lot of, uh, obviously had a lot of money as well he was convicted and still got a chance to be mm-hmm. a billionaire flying on planes yeah, doing all it, kinds of stuff assets weren't freeze freeze he the was conviction killed. part is what gives me some real pause with this don't piece of drink shit. that soda what? Oh. Yeah, I saw a fly over there. It's all good. Yeah, this guy was convi- uh, this guy was a convicted sex offender for years. He should have gotten a much harsher sentence. It doesn't sound like they took it as seriously as it should have been well, the like, first time. Looks like he got a different kind of sentence. Yeah. <laughs> so did. look, he he was arrested July sixth of twenty nineteen. So he was in jail for roughly a month for this con- this for, the, this for sex trafficking minors. In New York to Flor- uh, Florida to New York, so he was on suicide watch, and on this watch, he quote unquote committed suicide or he committed suicide. Details are still sketchy. Yeah, that seems real. Like that shit seems release. real sketchy. Real sketchy. Well, I think uh, so. What he they was said... on twenty four hour surveillance. Yeah, yeah, and, and they, somehow died. And I also heard the, the the guards were not there for like three hours. That's that's what happened. But I'm like, I'm yeah, apparently. Like, Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry, I'm not a fucking conspiracy theorist, but this some bullshit. Well, I know they were saying that he was supposed to be there was supposed to be a security or a guard that was supposed to check on him every 30 minutes, and I guess that's when they were gone for like three hours and they didn't yeah. check on him. But yeah, he was on he was on suicide watch for a while, but then they gave up on that and gave him a 30 minute window or whatever. <laughs> it's it's fucking weird. My boy Mike said his suicide was a surprise to him too. Yeah, <laughs> I totally agree because it's just. And you know what's crazy to me now is like after after the fact, people are trying to blame the Clintons instead of. And I'm just like, because there's a picture with him, but I'm like, there's pictures with him with Trump and a whole bunch of other fucking people too. So it's like, why are you blaming on just the Clintons? Yeah, so that's totally fucked up. Um, his connections with some of everybody yeah. run deep as fuck. Like a whole lot of billionaires and super powerful political people partied with this guy consistently for decades. Yeah. That's that's not even up for debate. That's not conspiracy bullshit. That's so, just, there's documentation, there's pictures we all have seen that haven't been doctored for shit yeah, with him partying all... with some of everybody. Yeah. And then some of these now women who were young girls at the time are all starting to come forward. There's there's a handful that have said, yeah, I was 15, I was 16. Or younger. Or younger. He's talking about doing it on the plane, private island Oh, bullshit. that's right. Right, the plane. Oh, so there's, so someone set up a uh, like a. It's not even a group. It's like a. Um, it's almost like an organization for women who flew on the planes for a certain period of time, like between a decade, to come forward, come to this organization to tell your story about flying with. Epstein, Epstein, fuckhead, you whatever. Parents had? You 16 years old, you on the plane with this? This mm. is the same thing with the R. Kelly thing. If you pay somebody enough money, some shitty ass parents enough money, <sighs> they'll let you whatever they want. They're just, it's fucked up. And people are pieces of shit. Yeah, there, there's no defending this, but. Back to that money I, thing. I, I just want to be real clear. Whatever, I can't remember what year it was, but 10 years, whatever it was, I didn't in know Florida. Two, two, 2008. When he got, 2008, when he got convicted. Of some type of sexual crime, so that that should have been it for his ass. Let me let me throw some numbers out here. 2008 served 13 months 
on what the plea, fuck is that? On a plea deal with 36 girls, some as young as 14. What the fuck? Now, see, that's... 36. That's where, you know, you talk about his political connections. That's right. where you talk about... 13 same, months. At the same time, though, like, that's so why I bring it back to, like, R. Kelly shit, because there was a video of him pissing on a fucking underage girl. Yeah. And somehow he got off. But I, he didn't serve any fucking time. No, I hear you. He was never convicted. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying, though. He should have been convicted. convicted. He, he should have been. Absolutely. No, I'm not arguing with you. All I'm saying is this guy was convicted and still got a basically slap on the wrist for what he did. That shit. That's all fucked up. Like Kelly, yes, should have been. They were selling the video all over the all over the country on and, VHS. And even though you hear me saying that, I'm not saying that this guy should have got off. No, I mean both of them are pieces of shit. Yeah. Anybody that does some shit like that, the kids are people that are not uh, consenting. They're pieces of shit. They can be thrown in fucking jail for a long ass time. So I hope nobody's listening, like hearing me wrong on that. The inmate no, take care of it. You're clear. You're clear. It's just I, I I can't get over the fact that you already had him dead to rights basically, and you you let him off the hook. Well, well, they, aren't they he saying got, like he was he did 13 uh, no, no, no. Okay, this is the reason why. Okay, so on uh, June 30th, 20, 2008, Epstein pleaded guilty to a state charge, one of two, of procuring, uh, procuring for prostitution for a girl below the age of 18. That, that's why it was so little. Because, I mean, that's yeah. with a minor. Mm, yeah, <laughs> that should give you at least a decade. <laughs> At least on that conviction. Oh, and it was in Florida. That's the other reason. Yeah, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Florida's fucked up, too. Yeah. Th that's all bad when you already have a conviction for underage shit with girls. And you but isn't, isn't the rumor or whatever the... Um, the rumor is going around saying that somebody killed him because he had information and he was going to, like, tell another people about so, what was going on. Actually, so he wasn't... He, sorry, let me just be clear here. He wasn't convicted of having sex with an underage girl. He was only convicted for procuring a prostitute under the age of 18. So I, I, that's yeah, all yeah, fucked yeah. up, that's, too. Yeah. That's, that's like, what do you yeah. do with prostitutes? That's yeah, like, no that, shit. That's yeah. You pay them to fuck. That's you know? pretty much a trafficking charge. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's the reason why I was so little. That well, should I be don't agree with them, but that's the reason why. A little? Yeah. That should Okay, this, this is fucking funny. On the Sorry, this, is, this is crazy. So apparently there was a, a charge, a lawsuit against Trump and Epstein about um, from a female who said that the had sexually assaulted her in one of his uh, Manhattan residents. All bad. And she was 13. All mm. fucking bad. Yeah. It, again, this looks like multiple states and multiple jurisdictions dropped the ball and allowed this predator piece of shit in the public with his private jets and shit for a smooth ass decade plus. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, I don't, see, yeah. I don't yeah. see another way of looking at that. Oh my God, I'm looking at case versus case versus case of like girls that are like 16 down to 14. That's fucking disgusting. And this dude got off on each kick and fucking and they he had him. Paid. That's what some gets the, me. Some of them he paid, but still no jail time. They had him. Like if, if somebody would have raped my daughter, Jeez. that'd be a rap for their life. Mm. Like, seriously. But could you imagine? You might have thought you got away with it, but you didn't. Could you <laughs> imagine the court system saying, okay, you are guilty of soliciting underage prostitution, but just a little slap, a little yeah. tap tap on the. Well, actually, I was reading the actual thing, and it was, apparently he only served three and a half months in jail. And the other part was. Come on now. Hold on. This is the other part. Is that any out? What the fuck was it? Three and a half months uh, in jail. He was allowed to leave jail on work release. What the for fuck? Up to 12 hours a day, six days a week. So he was basically staying in a hotel, basically. Yeah. yeah. So this, that, this guy had all types of power. So you know yeah, what his, this his, sounds his like? His cell door was left unlocked. He had access to his attorney, See? television, all this shit. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I get where, where everybody was saying. I, I get the fact that R. Kelly's a piece of shit. I get the fact that Bill Cosby's a piece of shit. I'm, I'm all on board. It doesn't excuse him for what he it, did. It yeah, doesn't but, excuse yeah. him, and he got off easy. You can call it what you want, yeah, but he yeah, got definitely. some privileges. And I, I would not be surprised if that the access that this guy had while incarcerated, quote unquote. Yeah, he wasn't incarcerated. This was not, they did not They did not grant this to Bill Cosby. They weren't going to grant this to OJ. Not even close. Yeah, and OJ didn't, didn't, didn't go to jail. Yeah, he didn't, didn't yeah. Go to jail. If he got convicted, but he should have been. been. What well, is the second he, time around? He went to jail for yeah, uh, stealing his own memorabilia. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What a dumbass. I mean, dude, this and is. Now, and he's still and he's free now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he's on YouTube now. Yeah, he's on tw Twitter and YouTube. Yeah, he's YouTube. all over the place. I mean, this dude, this Epstein guy, like, you know what this sounds like? What Kronos just described him having a, basically an unsupervised ankle bracelet bullshit. Wilson Fisk 
from Daredevil. Yeah, basically. Is pretty much Wilson Fish. Basically. He was still running shit while under guard. Yeah. Yeah. It's fucking ridiculous. This I, is I, like I, real I, life Wilson on. Fish. You want to know like real corruption? The sheriff's office received $128,000 from Epstein's nonprofit to pay for extra services yeah. uh, during his work release. So, oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's totally fucking corrupt. Yeah. That's, Get the that's, fuck out de- of here. that's definitely money privilege. Yeah, yeah that's, that's just money. That's fucking stupid. And power. You, and power, yeah. You gotta and have power, some political yeah. connections. That's, that's how you get the power, is with the money. That's Yeah, that's what uh, and that's Mose said. About it. I hear it. Well, but, I mean, there are some people who have political power who are, don't are come, broke. Well, who don't come from serious money. Like they that, don't you know? come from money, but they have money now. Just because they're in political power? Yeah, most of them do. Like, how the fuck do you think people come to political power? Especially here in America. The overwhelming majority, you're absolutely right. Um, I'm just saying that you don't... Ha- like, I wouldn't say... Obviously, he's dead now, but I wouldn't say John McCain was a uh, on the level of a billionaire. He had yeah. money, though. But he definitely had money. Yeah, I, I just don't get, think it's anywhere near this strategy. I'm sure he's a... Well, no, but I, I, he was definitely a millionaire. Definitely a millionaire. Okay. Um, I'll, I, don't, I don't consider him corrupt, but he definitely had money. Mm. And his and I know and his daughter definitely grew up in a life of, of privilege from money. Okay. Uh, I don't know all his background. I just think this is a different stratosphere of money. I really well, yeah. yeah, yeah. With this one, it, this it, this this is always different from. It, he was way more rich than, than John McCain was. Yeah. But uh, like a lot of those co- politicians that rise to power, um, John McCain is kind of a poor example because he was pretty straight laced. But a lot of those fucking guys yeah. and women. They're pieces of shit. They're all bought by lobbyists. They take a billionaire and oh, corporate sure. money all the fucking time to, to do their bidding, not the people's bidding. Uh, agreed a thousand percent on that. I don't even think Barack had crazy money before office. Well, before office, but after office, he had, he had fucking $40 million. Yeah. So where did that money come from? He had that Barack money now. Oh, you, I think he got book deals. I think he got uh, money for going uh, on like tours and signings. I mean, he's got a whole bunch of things but going on. $40 million. That's worth. a lot of money. Look. Yeah, that's a lot of money. I'm just saying before office, I don't think he had anywhere close no, to No, he did. But I'm saying is, is that he, he he accumulated a lot of money for being a president with a salary of like less than a half a million dollars a year. Yeah, I think that's right. So like that, that's a, there's a huge discrepancy there. He didn't go on fucking, during his presidency, he didn't go on fucking book tours. No. no yeah. you can't. So where'd the money come from? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it came it came from endorsement and signing and all that other stuff. I get that. I'm not. Sure. I'm just saying. Prior to it, you you don't have. There's a couple of exceptions. The overwhelming majority have come from money, but there's a couple of exceptions of people who didn't have. I don't. He's, to me, he's not an exception because he took money. I believe directly for like a lot of shit. Like, there's a reason why he's the, uh, the president that dropped the most amount of fucking bombs with drones. And I'm pretty sure it has to do with fucking contractor money. Um, I want to I want to bring this back to to Epstein. So his connections to past and current political administrations. Um, I want to bring it a little bit back to what I was talking about the organization. There's a I believe it's the the DOJ or someone someone's out there asking young girls if they flew on what was dubbed the Lolita Express which was the private jet that flew both Bill Clinton, Epstein, and Donald Trump why and would, various others. Why would any little girl fly on something called that? No idea. Or any parent allow their child to be... Well, it, it was, was called it was, that. It, it, it's terms. not... It, yeah, it was not a official term. It was like... A nickname. Yeah, the nickname. Because that little, like, chicks running around... Probably because they took money. They probably took a bunch of money yeah, just, to have these little, like, teenage girls running around just, in, like, miniskirts and stuff. Like fucking crap. Listen, if somebody wanted to fly my daughter anywhere without me, no. Mm-hmm. Like, that's, that's easy. I mean, I said, on a private today. fucking jet, mm-hmm. are you fucking insane? With 40-year-old men? Yeah, there's no fucking way. Yeah. No fucking way. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot of people. I mean, I've seen the memes saying that, like, the Clintons killed... Epstein because he knew because he went on record saying he knows a lot of stuff about sure a lot of it. powerful people. He said he knew these other people that are in very powerful positions that were having sex with minors. He just didn't spill the beans. So I mean, it would make sense that conspiracy theorists are all over this, but as the general public knows, this sounds fishy as fuck. I think the general public is all over this. I don't oh, yeah, think, yeah, I don't yeah, yeah. you have to be a conspiracy theorist to think that this is fishy as fuck. Fishy. Well, the, the problem is with me is that people just, they point the, they like to point the finger at the Clintons, but it's like, he was 
was a fucking friend of a lot of people, including yeah, the president. Including Donald including Trump, the president. who's been to the Mar-a-Lago. They're, they've flown out. He's been on this flight as well. Yeah, so, and, it's, and that's fucking crazy. So I'm sure that multiple people that are, are billionaires decided to kill this dude. Yeah. There's no I mean, way he I, fucking committed suicide. We're talking. We're also talking about Hollywood people like Naomi, Naomi Campbell, Dustin Hoffman, Michael Bloomberg. He knew some of everybody. Tony Blair. Yeah. Prime yeah, Minister yeah, of uh, fucking Britain. Like a ton of people. Very powerful people. Like world leaders. I, right. I spent a lot of time with this dude. Yeah, I, <laughs> I hope about that 30 minutes. I hope his estate gets well, blown up. I'm glad he's dead. Yeah, fuck this guy. Honestly, ah, but I, I wish yeah. they would have like exposed all the other pieces of shit. I right. wish. Hopefully they still can. They, yeah. They won't. It's just going to get buried. It's, it's already too late. Unless, unless someone gets a hold of like, some thumb drive that I, has some shit on it. I think I read somewhere they already fucking sealed the files. So. Oh, uh, shit. Right. They're already burying it. Where do you want to go next? Anyway, step? somewhere happier, please. Jesus. <laughs> all right. Uh, Idris Elba nearly died. Did y'all see this shit? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> I mean, fucking eat, hey, them wings be spicy, dog. Oh, 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 I I some kind of, what, was it a YouTube show? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a show. He has celebrities on there. And it's he has uh, it's them called fights. Now We Feast. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's called The Hot Ones. And it's a it's a show where they eat chicken wings. wings and uh, there's like eight of them. And they get hotter as they progress. And uh, the hoes ask questions how they eat. So each wing has a different sauce. They're supposed to be the yeah. world's hottest sauces on them. And he's had some of the most, some A-list actors, Stitch, like Idris. <laughs> Yeah, on there, a real problem with it. Uh, yeah, I mean, Scarlett's been yeah, on yeah. there. Why does he have a problem with Idris? He, he basically does, thinks he's not. Uh, he does uh, think not Idris a star. Is, yeah, he does think Idris is the E list. He'll have to explain it to himself. Oh, he, well, it's, honor. it's funny. They, they he had um not something Bell, the blonde chick. I can't remember her first name. Kristen Bell. Yeah, they, he had her on there, and she was eating the hot. She was doing the wings, and apparently she had like a, a high tolerance for spicy food. Yeah. Cause she was fine all the way at the end. She, like, she hey, was, was sweating at all. I gotta give her credit because she's hung out with a lot of black folk. <laughs> so I'm gonna put that out there. She, Which celebrity is she on? Or celebrity black folks? Or huh? Who, who's who she's hung out with? Uh, Kristen oh, Bell. Cause she's done, oh, okay, Cause yeah. she's been in like. Uh, hold on. If you look at her earlier work, she was in like some like blacked. Black yeah. Patrol. Ah, <laughs> uh, no, no. Black. Right. That's, not, that's not Hollywood. That's, that's yeah, the, it is. What are you that, talking about? That's the quote unquote industry. That's yeah, it. Black so, LA, um, baby. Um, while you're looking that up, back to Idris. This motherfucker, he actually wanted to fight the dude. What? <laughs> he looked at him and was like, you want to go? Yeah. I know he can actually fight, right? Yeah, no, I, I believe it. He's and like, I've seen him. He, he has he, legit Muay Thai. Yeah, but he he, he, he mouths it as he's fucking choking to death. Yeah. You want to fucking go? You what is this? I watch the show pretty, I watch the show pretty uh, regularly. And there, there's a lot of celebrities that come on there and they get fucking mad. Like, this, this spiciness just does something. Like, Kevin Hart was on there. He, he, was, he said it was... The way he was feeling was almost like he was drunk. Yeah. Like he just felt fucking like totally out of his mind or something like that. So I can see that happening. Those spices are no fucking joke. Oh, hell no. Like you know, ten out of ten level and shit. Yeah, fucking yeah. Fucking ghost pepper sauce. You know, it's funny, my my boy, sheesh. That dude can eat the spiciest fucking food. He's mm-hmm. like, I, I'm See good. It. He's like, I can use this shit for lube. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> That's the, he can, It'll I, suck for her. <laughs> I can, he can legit eat like the spiciest shit and be like unfazed. I've seen him. Indian cat. Can't, yeah. can't cook chicken for shit. Um, <laughs> yeah. <right. laughs> and good goat, though. Yeah, yeah, like, good. He's curry goat. Hell yeah. yeah. Is he like, I guess he's like your brother in law, right? Yeah, kind good. of in a way. Yeah, or, in a weird off way. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, he just is like a DJ. He's got an eclectic kind of background and shit. He's obviously done all the. Uh, the, he's in the recent movie Hobbs and Shaw talking about yeah. I'm Black Superman yeah, yeah. I gotta see that movie them wings right nearly took yeah. his ass out though man I loved it shit was funny I gotta check that out Have you, has anybody seen Hobbs and Shaw yes. yeah yeah okay. I haven't seen it yet I've seen it so it's uh, uh, funny you said, it's funny you said that because remember when you said it's oh like a yeah thing, and I'm, I'm like, sorry it's, uh, well you don't want to put this on the list yeah I put it on the list well you, you said that they were predicting they're gonna have a low opening and I was like, there's way too much big dick energy in that fucking movie for it to be a low opening. It was it was a uh, mediocre sort of at best. Well, I put on, in America, but yeah, it, worldwide though, it made plenty of money. I, yeah. I, what I was gonna trying to say, uh, the reason why I put it on the list, I didn't get a chance to talk about it last week. For the fa- uh, Fast and the Furious franchise, it was low. And what's his name? Um, uh, baby boy Tyrese was throwing all kinds of shade about it being the lowest yeah, but for Fast uh, and the Furious. It's, it's definitely but it's like over 300 million yeah, and number two or uh, number one two weeks in a row. Yeah, it's not the lowest for Fast and the Furious. Get the fuck out of here. 
Like for, for opening weekend. For opening weekend, no, I think. No, it's not. Yeah, we went the through first the numbers. Fast and Furious, oh, really? Okay. First Fast and Furious didn't do shit opening weekend. Neither did the second, neither did the third. It didn't start getting big until Justin Lin came on. Wow. Okay, so what was this opening? What was it, like 60 million? Oh, I think it, out of the eight movies, I think, I think it fell in like the top, like the six ones. Yeah. So it wasn't okay. the worst. It wasn't yeah, the worst. Then look, Tyrese yeah. was long. I got the quote from Tyrese. Oh, I think I think ass. Tokyo so Drift was at the bottom. That's where you fucked up already. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so, I'm not saying Tyrese, Tyrese is a, a reliable source. I'm just saying that's what he was throwing shade about. So Fast and the Furious opening. Right. I thought it didn't it say it at the headline. Or yeah, see, I, that's what I thought. Tokyo Drift only did tw- uh, 23 million. Oh. The final box office was only sixty-two million. Wow! Okay. Damn, yeah, that's way lower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's way lower. People that one perfect. fucking sucks. The first one, like I said, didn't do shit. Opening weekend was forty million dollars. Final box office was one hundred forty-four million dollars. Oh yeah, it's way over too, there already. Too fast, yeah, too furious. It was over that opening dollars. weekend. Fucking final box yeah, office, okay. one hundred twenty-seven million. That's yeah. why I was like, people are fucking tripping. Nah. And, and then Hobbs and Shaw opening weekend was sixty million. For in America, but yeah. in the world, it did way better. Yeah, yeah I think it, it did it over two hundred million. Yeah, man. so it's it's already number six. It's gonna go up from here. So, so it's not it's nowhere near a flop, despite what no. Tyrese was saying. Yeah, he's he's, he's a but fucking butthurt that because he's not in it. Yeah, that he's not in it, and, and it, it did as well as it did. Well, what was the fucking what was the misleading headline then you were showing at the top though? Oh, Wasn't that saying? Well, it said with uh, Hobbs and Shaw out, every Fast and Furious. It's just telling you the. Oh, okay, the, the, the order. Okay, yeah, the order. Okay. Like, uh, I so, thought it was a misleading headline. For no, a no, it definitely wasn't. So, Furious Seven, obviously, it did. It's just, they're only accounting for fucking. Uh, American shit. Yeah, but obviously opening weekend for Furious Seven it was 147 million dollars in yeah, America. Yeah, that's more. But and a five box office for America was 353 million. All this is misleading because this is a fucking international uh, box office smasher. Yeah, like it does way better overseas than it does in America. Yeah, yeah just like the a lot of the MCU movies do way better overseas yeah. than they do domestically. But no, this one was like by a lot. Hobbs yeah. and Shaw did what 60 million opening weekend, but overseas it did 120 million. Yeah, so like double. Which, money. It's pretty much unheard of. I'm I'm with it. I want to actually still see the movie. Yeah, I said who. I just want to say a fucking dope ass motorcycle. I want to uh, motorcycle was the big. best motorcycle on film. And in you my know, opinion. The other thing is, and I know I, I want to get old ninja's take since he has seen it, but it seems like the audiences in general like it too. Mm-hmm. I haven't heard of people shitting on it all that but, much. Besides Tyrese. Listen, all the Fast and Furious movies, except for like maybe Too Fast, Too Fast, Too Fast and Furious, still no, wasn't that bad to me. Tokyo Drift. Tokyo Drift was the worst. Yeah, one. that was rough. That had Bow Wow. Yeah. 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 But the rest of them, they're honestly, they're fun films. Yeah. Like, I love watching them. They're like a guilty pleasure. I'm not fucking guilty. I don't feel guilty about it. I fucking like watching them because I love cars. I love action. And uh, it's a perfect mix. An explosion. Yeah, yeah there's explosions. They gave everywhere. us. They get, uh, introduced me to Gal Gadot. Oh, yeah. sure. you know, I think you know, I didn't know everyone to Gal Gadot. I didn't know she was in. She originally was in the fourth movie before yeah. she was in the seventh movie or something like that. She's in like the fourth, that. fifth, and dies in the sixth. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think that's right. That sounds right. Well, so, what do you think of this one? Uh, it's just it's fucking Fast and Furious with fucking The Rock and Jason Statham. I mean, they talk about. So the one thing they don't really talk about in the film is their uh, their other brother, but what they do is they do flashbacks and they show. Oh, when he died? No, yeah, he died in like uh, Fast and Furious five or six or something. Yeah, one of them, motherfucker. One of them, um, the Rock's brother. I'm sorry, no, no, no Jason the Jason Statham's Jason character. Oh. Uh, He's the one that had like that, that Shaw's brother sports car that was real low oh, to the ground okay. and like yeah, yeah, the wheels yeah, would turn that. and shit. I remember. Yeah, that. he yeah, drives yeah. a McLaren and the in the Hobbs and Shaw drives turn. a McLaren. That's good because how would you corner? Well, no, like they 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 I turn. Know, I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All so, four wheel turn. So yeah, they don't really talk about the brother, uh, but they show in flashbacks a kid that represents like their brother, but they don't talk about him by name. Um, Helen Mirren's in the film. Who plays the mom? The mom, yeah. But she's she's gonna be in Fast Nine, so she's in that. I mean, there's a bunch of explosions. I mean, yeah, it's a big action fest. It feels like another Fast and Furious without Vin Diesel, and it's just two characters that you kind of know. So, did I you, mean, did you miss not having Vin Diesel and Tyrese in this shit? Hmm. Um, it doesn't feel like that because like they're both recruited by like intelligence agencies because um, Hobbs is when we first meet Hobbs in part 5 he's part of like this um, government agency so they come back and like they use his office outsourcing another office to recruit him and it's by a guest star a huge guest star who's like part of in the movie I don't want to give it away but it was like a shock to me because I didn't know this person was in the film 
Isn't that the same guy from the last one? No. Okay. So they introduced a character that um, that's probably going to last in the rest of the franchise. They also um, tie in the Italian job. Oh, well. Okay. Yeah. That was with Statham, right? Yeah. So check this out. The la- I think Fast 8 was directed by F. Gary Gray, which directed the Italian job with Jason Statham. So they oh, show... He wh- did the Italian yeah, job, he, too? Yeah, he did the Italian shit. job as well. Oh, shit, he was in there. I remember back when he was... F. Gary Gray was like... All he did was like music videos. Yep. Yeah, he yeah, was. Him and Hype Williams. Yeah. But then uh, he's done some... More, I mean, he's done... He did Straight out of Compton, which everybody loves. Yeah. So... Uh, but yeah, there's a one of the minis from that film. They make a quick reference to it, and you see the mini. So I'm like, oh shit. That's so, so cool, man. Yeah, they do some, they do little stuff like that. Um, I mean, it's a fun film. It's not like it's not going to win no awards. I mean, if you want to see fast cars and explosions, I mean, yeah, they're just like one of the Fast and Furious where they're driving cars from building to building. They yeah. have, they have like something like that, like The Rock holding the chain. Holding uh, the fucking, you see that in trailer. Yeah, the holding helicopter the fucking and shit. helicopter and shit like he wouldn't get ripped apart or pulled off. What it was. Captain America did that shit in him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Action scene for action scene, though. Uh, comparing this one with the latest, what was it, Mission Impossible. Did you like those action scenes better than this one? Mission Impossible feel more grounded. Okay. This feels more Fast and furious hmm. With the ridiculousness, but it looks cool. It looks cool, but you know it's fucking ridiculous. You know the rock should have been pulled apart while it's holding the fucking attack helicopter <laughs> the fucking train they link up all these fucking they link up all these old Fords together with these souped up engines like they're instantly connected like nothing could go wrong like they wouldn't do multiple tries to link up and shit they all perfectly link up and fucking helicopter pick them up it looks it looks crazy but so it looks cool on film technically you can do that I mean yeah but not without not one take not one yeah. take they do it flawlessly every fucking time mm-hmm. there's like six fucking trucks linked together <laughs> and then they fucking get fucking pulled off with the rock holding on with the fucking chain it looks fucking crazy but it looks cool on film even though you know that that would never fucking happen <laughs> ever <laughs> so it's a fun film it's not like they ignore the Fast and Furious franchise they obviously spun off from it so they did a couple jabs but they also referenced like I said the Italian job a couple other movies as well which I didn't quite catch so I mean it's fun but it's not the greatest film obviously is, is, is Vin Diesel doing the same level of hating as Tyrese I have no idea I've only heard Tyrese speaking out no I idea think it's, I think it's fake shit just to like get in the news get some press. Real. yeah, yeah. Mm. I mean, this little singer dude talking shit about the rock. It's like, get the fuck out of here. I don't think anybody's watched, like, Transformers or Fast and the Furious for Tyrese. No. Uh, no, that's yeah, good. Yeah, no. I, but I'll be honest, he used to make good music. Yeah, oh, yeah. man, yeah. The, 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 coke, yeah. The, the Coke bottle uh, oh, commercial yeah. back in the day on a bus. On that's, bus. What, that's what started his career. Yeah. So, so. I mean, I, good luck to him, but I guess. Let, let the rock get his money. Let Jason yeah. stay. Well, yeah. the rock's going to get his money. Yeah, yeah. rock's going to get his is he the, money. Is he the highest paid actor right now? I see. He was a while. Mm. Oh, maybe. But it might be RDJ now. Could be. Who? No. Could be Sam Jackson. No, it's definitely not him. Not RDJ? No, because he only comes out with like one movie a year. But yeah, yeah, but, but he, also, but he also gets... What was from a, Yeah, from he also gets too. credit. He also gets a percentage of film. Yeah, but so does The Rock. And The Rock makes more films a year than he does that accumulate to way more money. So most of the films that The Rock are in are... are at or near a billion dollars. Yeah, skyscraper wasn't the yeah, rampage was the few that's, yeah. that's still oh, that's still money in his pocket though. RDJ yeah. he makes one film a year maybe. But if you're getting a percentage of a near three billion dollar movie. Yeah, but the, the Rock's getting paid that too. You could I mean you could look it up. Yeah, we'll right now. So it, it'll, it'll let you know. Is this on Forbes? Oh, my, well, the year ain't done. And it's also the, the films that, that the Rock are in. He's like. By wow, far, that's the, the highest. What the hi- he's by far the, like the biggest name. You guys would not guess who the number one the highest paid actor is right now. Samuel L. Jackson, George Clooney. Oh, at two hundred thirty-nine million, The Rock is second place at one hundred twenty-four million what wow. for this what year. I, I, that's what I want to fucking know. I, I haven't seen him in anything in a while, unless he got paid for them. Uh, maybe R- the R- RDJ's movie? on there too, but he's far behind. He is. Oh Dave shit! Three. Damn, RDJ. RDJ. Will Smith is six. Yeah, Ooh. RDJ made less than Chris Hemsworth. Wow. Wow. Okay. It's crazy. Jackie Chan's still in here. What the fuck? How's he doing? He's still, he's he's still, still yeah, yeah, he's he's Chinese money, man. Yeah, uh, yeah I guess so that's what we see. Uh, did y'all see that? Uh, it's coming to Netflix. It's Jackie Chan. 
and uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger are in some fucking this. film. It's about to come out pretty What's soon. What's it called? That sounds oh, interesting. I don't remember the fucking movie. So this, this is going to be, if Stitch was here, he'd be like, oh, see, what I tell you, what I tell you. So for female actress, guess who number one is? Of course. Scarlett. Scarlett. Does, but he's Scar- and uh, no. guess who's at last place? Gal? Yes, Gal Gadot. Oh! <laughs> Stitch would be, damn! <laughs> but wait, wait, hold, hold on. on. Wait, I got I to say, hasn't it. Done the wait, hold on. He's not, he's not here, but I'm going to have to say it. Stitch was right. Well, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Wait, wait till Gal has. Damn. Been. Yeah, but um, is that another L for you? No, it's Oath interesting. Breaker? It's interesting looking at the the like the amount. So number one female, she makes forty million, and the number one man makes two hundred thirty nine million. Damn. That's a huge fucking gap. It, huge. Okay, hold on, it's not. A, it's a huge gap. See, people look at this the wrong fucking way. How long has George Clooney been making movies and been on TV? No, I'm just saying, like, in general, it's a giant gap. I'm not, just, I'm it's just not saying, a sex thing. I'm saying in general, though. Yeah, he's been acting for a way fucking yeah, long time. He's, he's been acting longer than she's probably been fucking alive. Mm-hmm. With more leads. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so people, like, they try to make that direct comparison, but you can't make the direct comparison because he's been acting way fucking longer. And oh, yeah. It, wait, is this cumulative or is this just for this year? Just, just for this year. year. Yeah. Wow. Oh. Uh-huh. But I think the only thing she's done is the Avenger movie, so... Well, yeah, and she hasn't done any... Like, her, her lead movies have been flops. Though, I will tell you that when Black Widow comes out, I think that that's going to make a lot of money. I think it could be a billion dollars. Okay. From, from what I've seen so far, that most people haven't seen... It was an extended trailer, right? It was... Uh, it, it, it was like a, it was like a clip. preview. Yeah. It was two clips in a preview. I haven't been released yet to the interwebs, but what I saw... Easily be a billion dollar movie. So right. to answer your question, Oathbreaker, the movie with Jackie Chan and Arnold Schwarzenegger is called Journey to China, The Mystery of Iron Mask. Mm. So it comes out later this year. Are we we to their streaming service? I've seen some set photos. It looks fucking crazy. Dude, since we're on the topic of movies, this is this one's been sitting on here list for a while. But I finally went to go see Spider-Man. Um, what is it called? Actually, Spider-Man it's called Home. European Vacation. Far from Home. <laughs> it's actually called Iron Man: Far from Home because <laughs> holy yeah. shit, dude! Yeah, it was like Far from Iron Man. <laughs> yeah, this yeah, this movie has so much fucking Iron Man reference. They, I, I swear to God, they said Spy- they said Iron Man way more times than fucking Spider-Man. This whole entire fucking Spider-Man movie, and like every fucking scene almost seemed like it was a nod to Iron Man because the one that even pissed me the fuck off was the scene where they're flying in uh, Tony Stark's airplane and uh, Will Thing's flying the plane yeah. and and what is what is Spider-Man doing in the back making his new Spider-Man suit using Tony Stark's tech and what music's playing the same music that Tony Stark used for building his Iron Man suit of course. Wow. and then like there's another scene where where Spider-Man or Peter Parker's wearing uh, Tony's glasses and his hair is all fucked up and he looks just like Tony Stark it's like they're fucking trying to deep dick you with the Tony Stark shit it's in this entire, entire fucking movie yeah. And then another thing was that once again, this villain is a, to- a Tony Stark's villain, basically. I mean, it's, it's not from his universe, but the guy is mad because of what Tony did. Again, again. So um, the Mysterio created. You know how, like in the Iron Man movie, where um, he used that VR thing to recreate his his interaction with his parents, and like the scene with like the piano, and all of a sudden it fades away, and he's like in front of an MIT class. Mm-hmm. Basically, um, Mysterio made that tech, and he was mad that Tony used that for for therapy for, for Tony or whatever. Listen, I'm, I'm going to call right now. Stitch is a fake uh, fake Spider-Man fan. Mm, Dude, was, yeah. Yeah. He, like, he, he likes Iron Man. He doesn't even like Spider-Man. There it is. And then, like, Iron Man fan. the spider, like, the, the Peter Tingle or the Spidey Tingle or what the fuck it was, like, ah, man, that was, that was just fucking annoying. Like, it just didn't have that vibe of, of a spider sense. It was just, I mean, they, they hinted on him, like, closing his eyes and, like, feeling for it, but you you have to have some kind of audio or visual reference to let you know what's going on with him, like, that he's having the spider sense and not just him with his eyes closed. Listen, Spider-Man, and Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse is the greatest Spider-Man movie of all fucking time. Period. I like, agree. it's honestly, it's one of the greatest comic movies of all fucking time. It, it made me question why the fuck, I've said it before in this podcast, but why the fuck we're making live action Superhero films. That's how it, good it was. It seemed fucking silly. Yep. And I've literally watched the movie at least fifty fucking times. Yeah. My, my my youngest daughter Riley, she fucking loves the movie. Mm-hmm. So we watch it all the time. And she, or I think Green Goblin is like a favorite character in it. Oh wow. And uh, and she knows Miles and all that shit. But it's just like she loves watching it. And every time I watch it, I was like, this is fucking. It is so well made. You know the other sad thing about that movie though is financially it didn't do as well as a traditional live action no, Spider-Man movie because the Spider-Man fans sometimes ain't shit. 
Like you wow. had this, oh, this masterpiece, like, like and you didn't even sport it. You didn't. <laughs> wow. I mean, Stitch did see it. I'm, I, to be fair, he, he definitely saw Into the Spider Verse, but a lot of people didn't see it in the theaters mm. and just didn't believe. Oh, I don't want to see another Spider-Man movie if it's not you know live action. Okay. You missed yeah. out. So, yeah, you definitely missed out. If, if you haven't watched it, definitely watch it. I give it my highest recommendation. Mm-hmm. That's, uh, a, that's a high 10. Yeah, it's one of the greatest comic movies of all time. There Easy. you go. Easy. It's so well made, too. Like All the Easter eggs and shit? I'm yeah, there's hundreds Easter of Easter eggs. eggs. Yeah. Like, like, seriously. There's one that... So there's two scenes where they actually show uh, Jim Lee. Or not Stan Lee, yeah. sorry. They showed Stan Lee. So there's a scene where he buys the Spider-Man suit, which is one of them. And then another scene is when... Um, after Peter runs into, or after Miles runs into Peter at the graveyard, and they're like swinging on the train or whatever, when they fall down into the ground, uh, Miles says, uh, uh, he says something about, you know, can you guys just walk around? And then uh, Stan Lee's character is the one that walks over them. Yeah. And that's when he says, like, oh, thanks, New York. And also, yep. when, when you first meet uh, Spider Gwen, oh. uh, she's literally wearing her tights and her uh, ballet shoes. Mm-hmm. And most people don't even notice that shit. That was a great introduction for her. Yeah. And also when the when the explosion happened, you can actually see the the characters flying out. Mm-hmm. At first, the first time around, I didn't see that, but if you watch it again, like you can see them like they're all going like different directions, stuff like that. Only a couple though. Kind of, yeah, just a couple. Because okay. like I remember, uh, Kim was asking me, she's like, if they all come in at the same time, how come Spider Gwen was there before everybody else? Because yeah. they explained it because she got kicked in the, a week in the past. Yeah. And then also the older Spider Man, older Peter Parker, he was actually older because. Um, the same time thing like they pulled him from like tw- he was 22 years as being Spider-Man and he got kicked into the past yep so love that even I'll even say this I love the Doc Ock uh, gender oh yeah oh, yeah. that was a great, was great twist yeah. I was like oh was. I didn't see this coming yeah. and I've never seen that in any comic or video game yeah. ever yeah. you know well, the, the, they should bring her into the comic hell yeah she was cool as, I think they're I thought they had plans to do that I think they should, so at least for Spider Gwen I mean, yeah. yeah. be great. Well, it was interesting with her too because like the scene where where uh, Peter where, they, where she first introduced herself as um, as Doc Doc or whatever yeah. and Peter's like oh they, do your friends call you Doc Doc she's like oh no my friends call me Liz but my enemies call me Doc Doc but later on when they're inside at the inside uh, Aunt May's house. Yeah. Aunt May calls her Liz. I love that. So people are assuming like, oh, they must have some kind of friendship or something in the past that went on. But yeah. Well, they probably did because uh, Peter Parker at that point he was a scientist. And mm-hmm. Yeah. He had his life. So. Well, then like another crazy thing I didn't realize until like watching the, the show a few, a few twenty thousand times <laughs> was that. Um, Spider Gwen, that her Peter Parker was the Green Goblin in her world. No, and I, didn't, I thought it was uh, the a lizard, lizard man. Guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, yeah Connor, he's a lizard yeah. guy. I didn't realize Connor, that Connor. until like a few episodes or a few times I watched it. Cause yeah, you see his skeleton. Yeah, you can see his skeleton, his arms, and stuff like that. So I thought it was kind of cool. What is this guy's, it's not the lizard. It's what the fuck's his name? What's the guy, lizard guy's name in fucking Dr. Connors, oh, right? Yeah, no, but he has like, what's his fucking villain name? It's not Dr. Connors. It's, it's called the lizard. lizard. Is it yeah, lizard? Yeah, it's just a lizard. lizard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. To me, it's not lame. <laughs> well, it, Some of them are lame. Oh, yeah. You know, there's like, <laughs> like show, there's fucking um, yeah, Scorpio yeah, and Scorpio, yeah. <laughs> Vulture, like all these fucking animal names. <laughs> yeah. The Kraken? The, the Kraken. Kraken. Oh, uh, Craven. Craven, yeah. Hunter. We will fucking see, man. Yeah, it is. All right. Making sure. Yeah. It didn't sound right in my head. Yeah, yeah. I know I said it. I was like, it doesn't sound right. It's weird. Comics Comics are fucking weird. Uh, Did y'all see the news about Ninja? No ninja, what you do, old ninja? Yeah. No, no, I no, no, old ninja, white ninja. The news <laughs> and the controversy. Yeah, how it happened? Break it down, then, Carl. Because he had con- yeah. controversy before because he didn't want to play a female gamers, yeah, right? That's not to me. It's not controversy. Okay, well, that's what people have fucking children. Because they're it. fucking stupid. <laughs> Listen, if, if if your girlfriend or significant other has a problem with you talking to women, and you just want to kind of avoid it. Best way to do it is not stream with with chicks. Not that he has a problem with chicks, but his girlfriend did, and you didn't want to fuck up his relationship. That's way more important. That's than, his wife. Yeah, his wife. Yeah, I'm about to say, yeah. isn't he married? That's way more important. So I can totally understand that shit. If 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 people are listening to this, they don't understand that. They need either a not a relationship or b not a serious one. I'm gonna go one step further and just put the extra piece on it and say that we're talking about a actual celebrity. And that's on a different level yes. of mm-hmm. thirsty ass groupies. So you and I and you know guys on this cast, 
We don't have groupies beating down our doors. Yeah, you don't. Yeah. <laughs> I got them beating something. I don't like. have groupies beating down my door trying to, you know, ruin my relationship left and right. I mean, that's a yeah. different level. He made the right call. Like, him inconveniencing some random hoes <laughs> to please his wife seemed beyond reasonable to me. And to pr- add uh, more proof to that, I know he played with Hel- Ellen on her show. Yeah. Who's a woman, and, you know. Yeah. I'm sorry. Anyway, uh, the controversy. Well, there, were, there was news and controversy. Yeah. Do it. The news was is that uh, Ninja, he, who's like one of the biggest streamers of all time, yep. plays a lot of Fortnite. Mm-hmm. He switched over to Mixer, which is a Microsoft-owned company. Um, he, he left Twitch for yep. Mixer. And so, what did Twitch do? Oh. They fucking. <laughs> oh, <I saw> <laughs> They basically all of all all of this subscription, all of his fans. They basically forwarded them to like a porn site, and they're putting porn and shit. I'm just like, dude, what the fuck? Streaming petty. porn. Petty. That is so fucking petty. Yeah. But I'm, isn't most of his like viewers probably kids? Like, yes. a lot. Yeah. he's got a yeah. vast majority. Huge. I mean, because Fortnite already skews extremely young yeah. Yeah, in yeah. terms of its player base and its viewership base. But then you add Ninja, who he's a grown man, don't get me wrong, but you know, he's got the colorful hair and he looks kind of teenage-ish. Mm-hmm. And he has a you know personality that is welcoming to young fans. So yeah, man, this what the fuck? Have they even explained like why they did that petty bullshit? I have to like, say it was all some kind of glitch. <laughs> no, yeah, we didn't know something had happened. Oh, blah blah blah. Man. And he was disgusted. He went. He put him on blast too. He was just like, "Hey, fans, you know, if you watch me on Twitch, uh, this was not me doing this bullshit. I moved over to Mixer. Twitch did this. They're gonna have to answer for it. And rightly so. He put him on blast on it. It was fucked up all the way around." Yeah, I mean, imagine those, imagine 12, 13 year old uh, girls and boys Mm -hmm. and whatever gender in between, between. yeah, are trying to tune in because they didn't know the news. Of course. They go in and tune in and all of a sudden, Ashley's clapping (laughs) on the screen. (laughs) Food is all over the place. It'd be great if it was fucking just Overwatch porn. <laughs> oh, man. Wait, what kind of game level is this? Holy oh, shit. Oh, where is this game? I need to unlock that shit. Hot coffee. Oh, uh, what was the other man. part, uh, Kronos? I told you both parts. Oh, okay. Literally, like him leaving and then Twitch being an asshole. Gotcha. Yeah. Right. yeah. Did he say, oh, no, he left because of the, the Microsoft. But it was big Swimming money for Mixer, yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. I, thought, yeah, yeah. I thought it was like a seven, eight figure dollar. It was in the millions, right? Something like that, yeah. But the, I heard uh, for female streamers, uh, there's controversy with Mixer because there's like a dress code. Oh, I thought that was Twitch. I thought Twitch no. had a dress code. No. 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 You, on, you can go on Twitch in a bra and panties. Yeah. <laughs> it makes you feel different. Which, I mean, listen, ladies, <laughs> if you want to be like a, a true f- like female gamer, like showing your tits shouldn't. That's not what they're coming. That shouldn't be what you're advertising. Showing your skills should be what you're advertising. Should be. It should be. Like, cause to me, if you're showing your tits and shit on. Uh, Twitch stream playing video games. That's not what people are coming for. They're coming to look at your tits, and you're basically a cam girl. But if you mm-hmm. want to show your skills, then show your skills. You know. Yeah. I'm not saying you can't wear whatever the fuck you want. You can wear whatever the fuck you want. But you know what you're doing. You know? <laughs> and I fucking know what you're doing. Yes. You if you want to try to argue with me, listen. I'm a fucking grown ass man. <laughs> I know what you're doing, and you're some young dumbass. So well, not all of them are young. <laughs> but, no, yeah, but, yeah. but I mean, you're showing your tits like that. Like you already, you know what you're doing. Yeah. Sometimes it's tits. Sometimes it's ass. Sometimes yeah. it's the ahigeho uh, face. It's <laughs> some of everything. Yeah. But hey, you know, everybody's got the, their hustle or whatever. I don't. I'm not hating on the the girls doing it per se. Um, mm. You know, some of them are fun. I'm not either because I mean, listen. I mean, make money the way you want want to make money, but at the same time, it's like. You know what you're doing. Like you can't sit there. Yeah, don't be, don't, don't pretend. fucking pretend that they're not. That they're coming to. They're just so interested to see how your fucking gamer skills. No. No. They're coming to see your fucking tits. Yeah. Because imagine if a, if a male gamer did that shit with, no. the, with the same mediocre skills. Yeah. yeah. Nobody, nobody watch that fucking shit. I mean, yeah. unless you're really good and you're showing your tits, then I, I guess you, and, got, you got the perfect combo, but probably not. And there are people who are. 
pretty much shitty at certain games, but they have such fun personality, yeah, even without right. showing, you know, some li lightweight lewdness, that people go and watch them anyway. They're just like, oh, I just want to see this person die over and over again, and they, yeah. they talk well. And I, I mean, and that's fine, but people kind of trip over shit like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's just like a, this is a blanket policy that's only enforced on women? No, I think, I think it's on men too. I mean, okay. obviously, it'll be, because no men's going to have their dick out, right? So, or I'll go mm -hmm. topless or some shit. Yeah, I ain't been on Mixer. It might be like grinder up in that bitch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> only this for Obama. I mean, not Obama. <laughs> well, Obama. <laughs> I don't know. To, to I think a dick right at Obama. That's what I. Was. I mean, to me, <laughs> even though we do stream on this podcast, um, I used to stream. I don't anymore because I'm just I'm too busy. But it's just like, I to me, I don't get a lot of satisfaction from watching somebody play a game, um, unless they're like doing like some sort of tutorial. Hmm. If I'm just watching, trying to figure out a game or just play, it's like. I could do that. But, yeah. But, but I think for some people that are younger, I get it because they don't have money. But they, yeah. they can't afford to like play games and they want to like watch someone else play. I get that, but the same, I'm, a, I'm a fucking adult. You know, it's, it's so, kind of a comedy behind it too, because some of the gamers they're a little bit more kind of theatrical. Yeah, but, yeah, most of them come off as like super awkward, nerdy. Yeah, like, <laughs> like no social skills. Yeah, there's a ton of them like that. Um, I'll say this: not all of them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, some of them are a lot like a podcast, just like yeah, in, yeah. in a lot of ways, like this, just free balling it, talking about all kinds of shit from sports oh, to politics yeah. to whatever. Uh, Geek, while and, Geek and Sundry do their podcasts on there as well as. Um, Culture Junkies, they do their podcast on Twitch. Yeah, but I'm, I'm saying some of them are actually gaming mm -hmm. and streaming while doing a lightweight amount of almost podcasting in terms of their, their conversations. Oh, I mean, that's Epic Mealtime, they do that. Yeah, they do. I mean, that'd be fun to do, and, and I'm glad that Mixer came out because it's an alternative. I think that when you have uh, one basically monopoly on a certain franchise, I mean, listen, Twitch killed YouTube gaming. They did. Yeah, I was going to say, like what, what happened to YouTube Murder. gaming, man? Murder. Jeez. There, there was, like, no comeback for that. So Mixer to, to, to jump in there, and I think Ninja jumping on there is going to really help them with the revenue. What was the other one? When PlayStation 4 dropped. I thought there was one for like, was it Ustream? Was that what it's called? Yeah, Ustream. Oh, uh, that, that, that's what, you know what killed Ustream? What? Was Joe Rogan. What do you do? I'm pretty sure it's what killed it. Because it used to be on Ustream a lot. Okay. So he, it was exclusively on Ustream. Oh. And then all of a sudden it was just like, let's go to fucking YouTube. And then... Oh, they're pretty much like around the same time. For, but for gaming time. though, no, just for like he used to podcast, he used to live oh, podcast. Oh, okay. On Ustream, but it's like let's go to YouTube. So. Gotcha. Damn, because I don't even are they even in existence still? Yeah, I'm it looks like sure it. They are, but yeah, they're way less viewers now. I remember there was an app I think on the PS4, like when you hit the share yeah. button, mm -hmm. that said Ustream, and I was I, that was my first time hearing about it. Yeah, I used to know a girl that worked for them. Wow. And uh, yeah, I mean it's, it's hard to compete with YouTube. Really is, yeah. And I, you know, even over streaming on YouTube, and I watch a lot of shit on YouTube. I don't particularly like the the direction that YouTube has continually gone. I like this new fucking shit they're doing with their ads, where the double ads. Yeah, they show double ads. It's like what the fuck. Right. And the, and the fact that I cannot control what ads that you see when you watch my content bothers the fuck out of me. At the same time, they will tell me that whatever content that, I, that we happen to see on this podcast is not uh, appropriate for all advertisers. But I'm like, listen, I'm not going for it. We're not, we are not going for all advertisers. There are advertisers out there that don't give a shit what we say. Does Switch do the same thing? I have no idea. Okay. But it's just, it's, it's fucking, it's annoying. There, there should be like a... I almost wish that I had the time to like sit down and like just code a new fucking streaming service because mm. there's a way you can do it that's like way smarter. Like have fucking tiers of advertisers. Yeah. YouTube, if you're listening, just which you're probably not, <laughs> but just have fucking tiered advertisers. Like have like advertisers that are okay with mature content because that's what the fuck they're going for. Yep. You know what I mean? Like there's advertisers out there that don't give a shit what you say to a certain level. As long as you're not like giving like obvious hate speech. But if you're just saying like the F-bomb or talking about politics, some shit like that, that can appeal to their uh, their consumers. But for YouTube to say, hey, if you say these certain you know words or talk about these certain subjects, then we demonetize. However, we demonetize where we still play ads on your fucking videos anyway. <laughs> you know what I mean? But and we take all the, we, and we take yeah. your profits. That's fucking bullshit. Yep. Now, there's a lot of folks complaining about both YouTube and Twitch, and yeah. some of those are real fucking fair. You know, like if, if I win, the, if I ever win the lottery, and I could like build my own data center, I would build my own fucking 
basically like a YouTube competitor. No. Like seriously. Because what it comes down I, I understand YouTube needs to get paid. Yep. All right. And the way they get paid is through ads. I totally fucking get that. And you need to, those ads pay for the storage space and all the infrastructure that goes with making YouTube. But at the same time, like I said before, not all advertisers have the same sensitivity as like a Disney or a Nickelodeon or some shit like that because to be honest with you, uh, you should not be getting Nickelodeon ads on our channel. Yeah, but no you sure. might. And yeah. I, we have no control over that shit. None. Uh, let's stay with gaming just a little bit. Um, I actually got a chance to finally fucking play a little bit of Days Gone. Oh, okay. God damn. Um, yeah, it's like... Uh, yeah. I, I, you know me, I'm a huge... PS4 exclusive kind of guy for the most part. Yeah. This this is a wet fucking blanket, man. I gotta tell you, this it does it feels like it's a 2012, 2013 PS3 game in a lot of ways. This and it's choppy. Yes, this is the problem for me. Is that the acting in it is actually not bad. The sure. problem is with the general gameplay. Is the the general gameplay like everything is like way too spaced out? And you have to like have like fuel management and shit like that. Like they made it way too fucking complicated. It's the same folks that made uh, Mad Max, but Mad Max is fucking way more fun. Well, they also these are Ben Studios are the same ones that made the uh, Uncharted on the Vita, which wasn't a bad game. That was maybe one of the yeah, best right on now. the Vita. Golden Compass, yeah. Yeah. Um, my issue is <laughs> you got a basically Daryl from The Walking Dead video game, and the bike stuff is not fun. It's Again, at least on my PS4, it's choppy. It doesn't feel right. Oh, this is the yeah. bike. Oh, mine isn't. Mine is not choppy at all. Yeah, my, but it's still. It's it's just not. It doesn't feel good. This was it's, this was a zombie horde game, right? Where they yeah. show him like running through a warehouse. Well, it's a zombie horde something. game. Yeah. There's very few hordes in the game that you have to run from. And w- once it happens, once you like run to a horde and you're like, oh shit, there's a horde. Mm. Like you would just have to run. And that's when like it's like palm sweaty moments. But there's so few of them in the game. It's yeah. just like I don't know. But the, the acting in the game is like legit decent. But the world feels empty because you're on this motorcycle that you need gas for. A lot of gas. And that's annoying. Right? Even when I upgraded the tank, yeah. you can't get from a quarter of the map to, you know, of one side to the yeah. other without having, oh, I got a refill. And that, and that's, that's fucking that's dumb. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but... It looks like a hell of efficient. Yeah, and then given, like, what we saw in the, uh, the trailers... Like, it's nothing like we saw in the E3, like, reveal. It's nothing like that. Nothing. Even the fucking color palette, they changed. It's yeah, it, like it's not it's, it's not crisp, at least on from a graphical standpoint. It's and muddy. I, yeah, and I I don't get the sense, and I hate to keep bag, bagging on, because it's, it's not the worst game I've ever fucking played. Not by any stretch. But it just, I had maybe I had high expectations. Well, you should have, because but you watch, I mean, the E3 fucking demos, they look dope. Yeah. You know, and then the game came out, and it was, like, way different. Yeah, and some people, like, uh, keep going. Sure, sure. Um, they missed a lot, of, a lot of opportunities in the game. Because there's, like, missions that you go on, and you're expecting, like, these zombie hordes. And it's like, there's some zombies, but you can beat them. And, like, when you see, it like, a horde, it's like, okay, I gotta go. But they, they give you time to go. You know, like, you, I, I've rarely died in the game. Yeah, it's not that hard. Yeah, it's not, it's not that hard. But, I mean... <laughs> Just world-wise, I mean, we're back to some of the same stuff from, like, Uncharted and, you know, you blow up the red barrel and, you know, that'll do an explosion. You got a, a crossbow. You got your, your weapons and whatnot. And the weapons aren't bad. And you can upgrade yeah, but, skills. But the fact that the world is so empty is a problem for me. It's just, like, you're, you're driving around. You can, you can drive around for literally, like, 10, 20, even 30 minutes. And not see anything of consequence. Yeah. Like, so, like seriously. Yeah. It, you're not going to get side quests. You're not going to see a horde of zombies. You might not even see a zombie that's anywhere even fucking near you. I, I might shit play it for a few more hours, but I'm almost done with it. I really am. I'm, I'm just not impressed. But. It's okay. Borderlands comes out soon. Yeah, well, you got that in uh, September, what is it? 13th, I think. Oh, yeah. So, I'm hoping it, I hope that, that they fucking knock it out of the park. Uh, from what I've seen, they are. I mean, they, they've added in features that 
make the game better. What are some of these features? Uh, so one of the features is that you can run and slide, which might not seem like a big deal to most people that pl play modern first-person shooters, but if, you pl if you're a borderline player... Never done it. Never done it. Um, the, the general gunplay like, seems very much faster. Okay. Um, you can shoot through cover now. Ooh. Um, most of the guns in the game, they have alternate fire. Okay, all and right. They added in new gun manufacturers in the game. Ah. If you ever played Borderlands before, they have, uh, and, and they also added in, um, each gun manufacturer also has an additional gun perk. Oh, okay. So, like T-Door, uh, if you ever played Borderlands, T-Door in previous games, uh, you could throw the weapon and it basically becomes, a, when you reload, you throw the weapon and it basically becomes a grenade. Yes. And the grenade is the exact amount of bullets that are in the gun. Yeah. That's the amount of damage. I forgot about that. Yeah, that was great. But in this one, T-Door guns have another effect to where some of them, if you throw the gun, it becomes a drone. Ah. And some of them run around and kill shit. Some of them fly and kill shit. And so if, if, if the gun that's flying around runs out of bullets, you can yeah. throw them a mag with the current gun that you're holding, Ooh. and you throw a space like your own little drone. What, what do you think? That sounds awesome, too. But what do you think of these characters? I saw the clip, like, trailers for all four of the initial characters. Yeah, so it looked interesting. So uh, Flack was the guy who had the... Uh, he was the guy who basically controlled, like, monsters in the game. Yeah, three monsters, right? Yes, three different monster types, and they all have different attributes to them. He has, like, like these hawk things that can attack, and he has different, like, dog-looking things that do various other types of deals. They had, like, a secret operative. I forget the guy's name. Zane. Mm, name, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who might be who I'm going to play, because he can uh, clone himself to, like, have a holograph projection of himself. Mm. And he has a bunch of other... Uh, attributes as well. There was a girl who basically is kind of like Diva, who can jump into a mech for her Yeah, thing. yeah. And then you have Amara, who is a siren, who, she's Indian, mm -hmm. and she looks pretty fucking badass, because she has like these six arms that come out of her back, and she can just like totally fucking wreck shit with like these crazy siren It looks like she powers. punches about with those arms. Yeah, she punches with them, and she can like slam it on the ground. You talking about Borderlands, right? Yeah, Borderlands. Okay, yeah, yeah. Borderlands 3. And uh, apparently, so when Zane was first announced, they said that he was the first person to have... You can have two active skill trees basically at once. Hmm. And I think he, they... And eventually they said that other characters, you can uh, choose skills from multiple trees. Which okay. Is a, which is a far departure That's from previous games. So that'll be interesting. But obviously... There's gonna be shit like far down the tree that you're gonna want to get. So you're probably still gonna like stick to like one tree. You gotta tree. be dedicated to a, yeah. a, a tree. And these are only the first four they've announced for the characters. Every Borderlands game thus far has had multiple characters after the games have been released. Sure. And multiple really good fucking DLC. Absolutely. After it's been after it's been released. So I'm really looking forward to it. Oh, and then the Hyperion weapons. Uh, when you when you pull up the weapon, like a little shield comes in front of you. Yeah. So there's like they've added in a lot of new content that it's gonna make the game a lot better. Oh, no, you, and it seems like a lot faster. Are you, are you looking forward to this one too? You seen the trailers or? Uh, or, or I've or, seen some of this stuff, but I just know that this is gonna be a really fucking long game. This game is gonna be supported through 2020. So if you don't have a lot of time, this might be the only game. But there's gonna be a shit ton of games coming out in the fall so it's gonna be fucked up so i already know a lot of people are gonna get their time eating up with this game to me i'm just like am i gonna have the time because there's a bunch of games i'm looking forward to coming up with call of duty modern warfare coming out a lot of people are gonna be on when that. Is that coming out uh october. no is it october november october um gears 5 is coming out which no, i'm excited about <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the, the, hey. the new Star, the new Star Wars game. I'm looking forward to. That's November. Uh, yeah, still. That's plenty still. time for Borderlands. Yeah. yeah, but I'm no, it's not. I mean, you'll play Borderlands, but there's still you'll be able to keep coming back. You're not going to beat it in a month. I mean, you're going to keep coming back. There's going to oh. be more stuff, more stuff. There's yeah, going to there's going to be events. But you got there's not so there'll be no events. I'll guarantee you there'll be a DLC, mm. but there'll be no events. You don't think they'll go that route? You don't think they'll do events to keep people coming back? No, because that's not how the game's designed. Mm. In the past, uh, you're right. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's not that kind of game. Mm. Okay. They have legit. They have DLC. Okay. That is usually well, it's paid for usually. Yeah. Unless you get the the pass or whatever, but they don't they don't do events. 
Yeah. You're, you're absolutely right. They have right. They have Yeah. So, we'll I mean. The, the third one has in store, though. Yeah, we'll see what the third one's like. I'm just deciding on which system I'm going to get it on, who's going to be, who's going to be You know us, there. you know. Yeah. Yeah, I do know y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know how y'all do. What about you, Blue? Yeah, I'm definitely going to pick up this game because the last two that I've played have been nothing but fucking fun. And play, especially with playing with friends online. Like, yeah. being able to, like, level up with friends and shit like that, it's fucking dope. Bro, but they, they have a fucking gun that shoots guns. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, le- like, legit, it shoots out gun loot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> did y'all see the... To, I think it was today or yesterday, there's, like... I think it's like the 10 or 13 crazy... There's like a pizza launcher or some bullshit like that. No, it's a hamburger launcher. Yeah, there it is. No, hamburger che- launcher. Cheeseburger launcher. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. What the fuck is that? There's yes, a few oh, other oh. ones. I think they did that in SpongeBob. Oh, God. <laughs> they did Mr. Crab Patty Shooter. I want to be surprised by some things. I'm, I'm purposely not looking at any more info. They've already pretty much sold me. Teen you Titans know? did it. Well, Teen Titans just... go with the meatball party. <laughs> the, the announcement sold me. The, yeah. the Borderlands is like... It's literally one of the greatest first person shooters of all time. Um, I, that's how I got you into that game, didn't yeah, I? Borderlands you got one? me into it yeah, too. Borderlands One, yeah. yeah. And I was just like, because I remember when it first came out, I was playing on the PC, and this is how this is how I, I devolved into a fucking console player. <laughs> is because uh, make it sound so dirty. Well, <laughs> but proud of you, he had a PlayStation at the time, mm-hmm. and I had like a place PS3 and the Xbox 360, mm-hmm. but I, I wasn't like a serious player on there. Yeah. I was a so like I was a legit. PC player for first-person shooters, but everybody else just kept playing on fucking consoles, and I'm just like, I guess I gotta get them. I guess I gotta, I guess I gotta start playing those online now. Yeah. Yeah, and then the PS3 had its 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 issues with online stuff. No, there ain't no fucking doubt about Especially it. Especially in Iraq, Jesus Christ, that. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I, I, again, I, I'm fucking sold. This will be the big one for me in September. Uh, I think you are right, old ninja, in terms of there will be a lot of content one way or another. I'm not saying for sure there's going to be events because I, I, you know, they haven't done that before. But I think there's going to be very consistent, like within the first two months big DLC and then the replayability is something that a lot of people underestimate with these games because yeah. you just keep wanting to get the best gun for yourself yeah. and you want to play as different characters yeah, yeah different characters or fill out a completely different skill tree yeah. you know on the same character and then they have new characters um, there's all and then even just secrets and easter eggs there's things that you will fucking miss throughout your first playthrough or something so th- this is going to be big this is going to be fucking huge ass fucking shit it will be. All right. uh, I have a feeling we're missing some game. Wait, when does it come out? Borderlands 3. September 13th, I believe. Yeah. Good. I'm going to give GameStop some money so they can stay in business. Oh, <laughs> oh damn. Listen, I, everybody talks shit about GameStop, but I tell you one thing they do great is give you the game the day before. I'm just saying. If, if, especially if you're here in uh, California, because yeah. we can pick it up at, like, fucking, what, 6? 9 o'clock, no, I think. 9 o'clock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. O'clock. Yeah, which is, like, very reasonable. <laughs> so please stay in business. Only certain GameStop, so make sure you check it. <laughs> yeah, you got to ask them. Yeah. This is true, man. I, I love I going to one. I was the like, one, the one by nobody. I hope yeah, you hang on. by the one by me. I hope or, they can yeah. hang on for these new consoles. Well, I feel really bad because, you know, I, I used to work for Software, etc. back when I was a kid. Was, oh, my God. I forgot about basically that Basically back shit. in fucking 1885. Oh, my yeah. God. You know, it's they show in um, Stranger Things 3, right? Isn't Don't they show... Epic? Oh, they show Electronic Boutique. Yeah. Oh, which is free then. And they bought yeah. them out too. They yeah. bought out Software Etc., Electronic Boutique, and then something else too. And that became GameStop. Um, and they all kept the same spots. But Funko, I think it was. They bought. Was it? Well, oh yeah. Maybe, I don't know. Shit, what was I going to say? Um, <laughs> let's move on to some anime. Alright, let's go. Uh, oh, anime has been shit. going hard as fuck. There's some really great anime that is out right now that some of y'all may not know about. Um, have you caught up with Demon Slayer? Oh yeah, I'm current. I that, love it. I'm, I'm pretty sure for me it's gonna be anime of the year. Mm. Fairly certain. It, it's a high contender. Yeah, but, but we'll see. But it, it's up there. This is like it. First of all, it's one of the most beautiful animated animes of all fucking time. Like hands down. Uh, the way they 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 draw these crazy water effects and now fire effects mm-hmm. and, and electric effects are fucking amazing. Um, so you said you caught up, right? Yeah, I'm on. I saw 19 over the past weekend. Yeah, so 19 is like one of the best anime episodes of all time. 
like watching him go through like the fire. It's high. It's high. Yeah, it's not the best, but it's yeah. up there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I'm I'm willing to say I don't think that's hyperbole. I think I think you're you're pretty much onto something. And it seems pretty universal. The anime fan base went wild. The internet went wild for it. Yeah, and it's not just that the fact that it's beautifully animated, the fact that the animation's really good, the action's really good. It's uh, it's also emotional. Yeah, mm-hmm. for the main character. You saw it too. Well, I, the last, I'm I'm like four episodes behind. I'm not caught up. Shit. But um, I'm looking at Crunchyroll right now, and this this thing has fucking five stars. With yeah. 314 people voting on it for that's five fucking stars. fucking rare. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to do. Tanjiro is great. Uh, you know. It's such are, a fucking dope. <laughs> yeah. Are Are you on the Spider Family? Blue. Not yet. No, no Spider Family. Think, no, no. Once okay. you get three episodes behind. Him. Okay. <clears throat> I just barely got to part when he got out of the the crazy the crazy house the crazy house <laughs> yeah yeah. The, drum dude. yeah the drum dude yeah yeah yeah, the, yeah once he finds like one of the the top twelve people or it's twelve right yeah twelve well, okay I, yeah. I did he did I did see him oh no the guy that had the drums was part of the twelve no he got kicked out yeah he got kicked out but he had the scar in his eye he did yeah yeah, yeah and that was all fucked up too but yeah yeah I know what you're so about. you get to meet like one of the lower five oh, okay yeah later on it's just like whoa dude yeah I'm seeing a thumbnail for it right now and like I think episode eight they introduced the, the spider girl. Okay. Well, he said there's an image of a spider looking creature or something. Oh, no, no, no. About. They introduced it like before that. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think 16. Or I think something. it's 16. Yeah, something and, like and that. And it's pretty insane. <laughs> Especially when, like, there's people that you think are going to die in the show and you're like, fuck. Just what the. Just watch it. I mean, yeah, it's so it's just, the one that threw me for a loop is um, a homeboy with the the guy who's scared of every fucking thing. Yeah, He's like, hair. hella, yeah, hella creeping out and shit until he like passes out, and then you can see his fucking true fucking nature, and his true nature fucks shit up. Like the demon didn't even have it. Like the demon didn't even have a chance. The guy like he didn't even take out his sword. The guy just fucking died. Then you just hear. Cool. It's it's fucking so great. I can't believe I'm behind on it. It's just been so fucking busy lately. I, man, look, I caught up literally on Sunday. <laughs> hearing people talk about, oh, have you seen it? Have you seen it? Have you seen it? And Dude, I, I got current and impressive. We will talk in detail with spoilers probably next mm-hmm. week about that. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna catch yeah, up. Cause it's, God damn, it's so fucking good. Um, all the ones that I've been watching is uh, Fire Force. Have you watched that? I'm uh, only on episode. I finished the first two. So okay, I'm, I'm a little only, bit behind on there's that. There's only five. Yeah. It's by the same person that made. Uh, Soul Eater, right? Soul Eater. Yeah. So if you like Soul Eater, you'll definitely like the show. Same type of vibe. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's a good show. Not as good as Demon Slayer, but uh, it's definitely worth the watch. Uh, what else have I been keeping up with? Vinland Saga? Vinland Saga. God fucking damn. How many did they release? Because they so, were doing three at a time, right? So I've been confused. So on Amazon, they released three at a time. But apparently okay. somewhere else they released, because a friend of mine, he has ones that are far past that. Yeah. There's other places where you can get it. I just don't know where. I'll do research next week, I'll tell you. Okay. Where you can get them. But I finally watched episode four. Mm. And holy shit, was it good. Because episode one through three was fucking dope. Episode four was like jaw dropped to the ground. I was just like, damn. I'm going to get caught up on it. The only problem for me is I always forget to go back on Amazon. I did for the boys. Yeah, Amazon Prime, but, but like, yeah. besides the boys, I don't usually go to Amazon very often, especially yeah. not for anime. Listen, I'm, I'm going to be a, a mouthpiece for Amazon right now. Mm. Uh, Amazon is really putting in an effort to make shows that people are going to want to watch. Nice. Because they, they made a lot of shows that have been good, but nobody fucking watched. Yeah. But The Boys is fucking dope. Carnival Row will get good reviews. I can almost guarantee it. Okay. Um, that was a British one, right? Uh, it's British, but it's you'll, it's a good show because it, it delves deep into like, like legit racism. Okay. Which... Shit. Oh, it's the 14. I can talk about it. All right. Sorry, there was an NDA. Okay. <laughs> Hold on, let me make sure. Talk for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> well, another, another good thing, like I mentioned last week, that um, Amazon brought back my favorite show, Ronin Warriors, but the motherfuckers took it away. Goddamn, yeah, really? Yeah, like, I'm like fucking 10 episodes left until fe- f- uh, finishing the season. They took they took it away. That fucking sucks. Like, I went to go watch it. It's like, this is not available anymore for video streaming. Ah, I'm like, shit. fuck. It's, not the yet. Fi- it's the 15th. All right, one more day. Ah, oh, God, God damn it. Do, I'll talk about next week. Do it the right way. I was going to go deep. And we're gonna get fucking fired. Yeah, don't, don't, uh, don't be pissing off Amazon. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I Amazon's have can- cancel all of our fucking accounts. I have early access to, to watching the show, and, and I've been watching it. And uh, it, to me, it's good. It, it's a really good show, but it is not like The Boys. It's good in a different sort of way. It's it's um 
it's not as over the top as the boys. Okay. But it still has sex. It still has gore. Nice. And it still has things that you definitely want to see. It's just at a different pace. Mm. Okay. Than what you're used to in like a superhero movie. Well, let's do a deep dive next week. We will. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I don't said, want to get you in trouble. Fifteen. <laughs> oh, we're us in trouble. Yeah. Listen, a- Amazon. Uh, we, I we definitely appreciate the access yes. that you've been giving to us, and we're not trying to, you know. Hell no. Talk about the shit before it's supposed to. Uh, one big one that has not dropped. Like we alluded to it a little bit uh, at the beginning of the show. Finally, Cannon Busters <laughs> at midnight tonight on uh, Netflix. Oh shit, it's tonight. Yeah, it's tonight at midnight. So wait a minute. We okay. got to give a shout out to Lashawn Thomas. Yeah. yeah. Because when this podcast first started, when we first hit the airwaves, we never even met this dude, but he liked our content. And we had a chance to reach out to him. He was really busy developing That's what right. we're about to see. So Cannon Busters actually got the first issue. Let's we'll, we'll him back up. Uh, we'll, yeah, yeah we'll, 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 absolutely. We'll try to do some. But I have the first issue and I can't find it. Oh, for the, so uh, can, the comic, the comic yeah. way back in like so the nineties. Do you have it or don't you have it? I do have it, but I Are have when sure? I moved. When I moved, <laughs> it happened. Yeah, cat. When, what? <laughs> Schrodinger's cat. Uh, <laughs> uh, people smarter than you will understand what I just said. <laughs> I, I didn't hear what you. I didn't hear what you said. Schrodinger's cat. Oh, that, that still went over seven. Yeah, um, <laughs> it went over mine too. That's all right. Uh, keep going though. You you said you may or may not have it. I may or may not have it somewhere. But uh, I've been waiting on this because he worked on the Boondocks, which everybody. Fucking loves yeah. animated show with Aaron McCruder. Um, he's gone through some ups and downs trying to get this out there, and it's getting on Netflix tonight. I'm Can't excited. wait. I'm fucking excited. Look so at this. this comic already a buzz. Was well, this comic only two issues? Cannon Busters? I don't know. How uh, I don't believe so. Because I'm on, I'm on Wiki and saying there's only two issues. Maybe it back built, in 2005. Yeah, maybe that was it for the comic, and then it, they, he built the world novel. based on it. I don't know. I don't know. But uh, Netflix has, other than Cannon Busters, which definitely we should all watch this. We'll talk about it uh, next week. Mm. But also, if y'all didn't know, Invader Zim Into the Forpus <laughs> drops on fucking Friday. Nice. And I'm a huge Invader Zim fan for like the longest time. Uh, Yonan Vasquez. I was fucking pissed because we were at San Diego Comic Con. I wanted to go to the Invader Zim panel, but I mm. couldn't because it was just... Just conflict of interest. Oh, not conflict of interest. Just conflict of time. There's only shit I had to do. I already knew I was going to watch the show anyway. Like, they they didn't need to convince me to watch the show. But I'm a huge Invader Zim fan. We actually have uh, a soundbite of the voice of Gurr. Yeah. Like, doing the intro for our podcast. If I can animate that in some kind of way, I'll do it to, like, make it our new intro. Yeah. Um, but I love the show. I'm looking forward to it coming back. No, so this is a series. Do we know how many it's a episodes? a movie, I'm pretty sure. Or a movie, okay. Yeah, let me Even make better. sure. Um, I, I, you know about Cannon Busters? No, it's no, no, talking no. about uh, Invader, Invader Oh, Invader's Dam, yeah. I think it's on Netflix, though. Yeah, yeah it will be I'm in Netflix. Sure. That's fucking dope, because it was a Nickelodeon show, right? If I'm not mistaken? <laughs> yes, it was. Yes, it was. That's, and it was. It shouldn't have been on Netflix. That's fucking cool. Well, what's cool right now um, on Netflix is um, they brought back uh, Rockwell's Modern World, and that's on, available on Netflix right now, Modern too. Modern Life. Modern Life, yeah. And um, that shit, if you watch it now, like what they had back then, that shit was not for kids. Like, there was so much adult shit, like, un- like sexual into windows, or in your windows. So, Zim looks like a movie, right? Yeah, it oh. is a movie. It's an hour and 11 minutes long. Hey, we'll it's take it, man. This is out on yeah. Friday. Show that support. I can't wait. I'm definitely watching it. Should be good. Now, there's one I don't think, I, I think we're on the opposite sides on this one, uh, Kronos. Have you seen the Kingan Ashura? So you don't like it though. No, no, no. Right? So we're not totally on opposite sides. Okay. I just don't like the animation style. Uh, That's it. Okay. The show is itself it cel- is cel- shading. Yeah, I, I don't. I'm not a fucking fan of cel shading. <laughs> I'm really not. I hear you. It's just. I, and a bunch of other shows have done it. I mean. Uh, what's it called? Is Berserk, it. Did, Berserk it. did it. Baki. Yeah, and like, uh, what was it? Nice of Sedonia. They, mm-hmm. uh, they did it. Yep. It's. I think it's the same studio. It looks exactly the fucking same. It does. And I do not like associated anime. But this show seems interesting. It really does. It just that, that's a huge distraction for me watching these shows. And I totally get that. It's not my favorite <laughs> style. Because it, it, remember, for Berserk, which we were all very vocal on, uh, even we had uh, the Castlevania guy, Sam Dietz, who, in a lot of ways, trashed 
Berserk, uh, the anime. Rightfully so. Because it, it didn't look right. I especially totally, compared to the movies. Yes, I totally agree with Sam Dietz. Uh, we need to have him on because he, uh, season three drops this year, right? Oh, shit, for Castlevania. I think so. Oh, wow. Yeah, so we need to have him back on and, and, and talk about it. Um, but they, they, it's a. It's like a distraction for anime because it doesn't look like anime. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just like the shit looks all off, and I, I I think it's like lazy animation. You know what it is too, and I, I'm not a film expert at all, so I could be way off base here, but just visually, it almost looks like the frame rate is a little too slow sometimes. Yeah, mm. it's choppy. Yeah, um, yeah. It, it is choppy, and I just I'm, I'm just not a fan of. I, I want my anime to be hand drawn by some poor kid, <laughs> and I didn't fucking paid enough. <laughs> That might commit seppuku, <laughs> you know, at a fucking bar or some shit. Uh, I feel bad for him, but please stop, like, hand drawing animes. Yeah. Uh, but I will say this, too. Story-wise, you know, this is corporate fight club, basically. This is, yeah, it is. This is some badassery of Japanese, Tokyo-based uh, companies saying, hey, baddest fighters in the world. I want you to fight on my behalf against this other corporation's yeah. baddest fighter, and whoever wins gets to basically do a corporate takeover of you know some stock and, well, and corporate they, shit. They make, they make a bet for various things. Yeah, and whoever like whoever's fighter wins wins the bet. Um, I think I watched the first two or three. Yeah. So and, and I'll, I'll, I'll watch the whole thing, but it's just like it's difficult for me to watch because that animation style is just it's fucking whack. Yeah. It's a whack ass animation style. There it is, man. And they promoted it on that shitty ass documentary into oh, into the anime. Uh, so I tried watching that shit. I I a thousand times. Did your eyes bleed? I could I couldn't fucking make it through like the first interview. I was just what the fuck is this guy even talking about? It was a girl, right? The, well, no, it was the, it was with the the guy from um, uh, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Oh yeah, or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that he, one guy. I was like, he, what the fuck is he talking about? He was actually the producer for Castlevania, which I love Castlevania. Yeah, yeah, but. The host, the, the director of it, yeah, it was all so, in this stuff. Well, it's, it's so fucking bad because, like, she curses in it, but it it seems so forced. Like, I don't know what the fuck I was getting into. It's like, why? You, like, there was no reason for her to say fuck. Like, it was just fucking dumb. Here's my thing, man. And this oh, is so not bad. too much fuck to fucking ask. If you're going to make a doc, I expected like a Ken Burns mini style mm. documentary about anime history. Yes. If you're going to make an anime documentary. You have to have watched some anime before. Yes, yes. You can't just be like, I don't watch anime. What is this weird? I'm going to use kind of a phrase that she was alluding to, oriental uh, yeah. type of thing. It's weird. It's exotic. No. Don't do that shit. No. Do your fucking homework it's and then get on camera talking about, here's what I learned about anime. This is what anime means to people from the 1950s and 60s. Yeah. This is what it means in the 80s, 90s, and 2000s. There's so much that could have been done. It was so much fucking missed opportunity. You know what's what's annoying for us, especially on this podcast, is that we've done panels before. We have to do fucking research, like legit fucking research. Yes. To know what the fuck we're talking about. Yes. And to have somebody like come out with some shit where they didn't do like their legit research, that's fucking disrespectful. It is. It's clear. It got paid good money. That's the other thing, too. We did panels for For free. free. Yeah. And (laughs) this bitch, I know she got paid some kind of good entry level Netflix money. Blue. Me, Kronos, even on the... We together, we could have done a better like, documentary. Even, I swear to God. Even, like, the filming and the editing of the video was kind of fucking annoying because it kept jumping from scene to scene. Like, the, every scene lasted, like, maybe two seconds. It's like, what the fuck? Just stick on one fucking thing. Like, God damn. Amateur hour. You got to see it just to see how bad yeah. it is. Man, I swear to God. It's a train wreck. I, I, you know, I can't because, listen, I think I talked about it on a podcast before. It's like, I literally created the anime club <laughs> at my high school. Dude, it's so oh, it's And so for hard. me to like go watch some like bullshit anime fucking documentary, uh, it makes me like grape leaf, grape leaf angry. Yep. You know? Yep. So. The cringe is hard. Yeah, it, it's it's hard. all cringe for an hour and some change, man. Yeah, it's so fun. All, I think all only thing, only animated chick watched was everything else on Netflix. Like she didn't do any other kind of research. She just watched whatever Netflix and had. And there's only on certain there. ones for Netflix that were upcoming. Yeah. That was the other thing too. Yes, yes. Like, <laughs> they've done they didn't talk about anything like even Voltron or yeah, Seven true, Deadly yeah. Sins or a whole bunch but of it was, stuff it was crazy too because like I watched I literally watched this one thing on uh, on YouTube about um, interesting quirks in anime that you never really realized mm-hmm. and like I learned so much from that 10 minute fucking clip than I did that whole Netflix special while at Fanime I sat in a panel that was all about the politics behind 
anime's history. I had never heard anything like this before, oh, yeah, right. but he went to Japanese, like, uh, uh, flyers about the studio and mm-hmm. talking about some of the stuff with uh, uh, unions, talking about some of the stuff where there was um, uh, actual strikes and riots and all, all this kind of stuff or with Japanese anime. history that impacted some of the writing and directing of anime history. Mm-hmm. Very interesting panel where the guy did his homework. I wish I could give him, put his name out there, but Number. that's the kind of homework we're talking about. Hey, yeah. we gotta move on. Uh, Fuck that show. I thought it was kind of cool. There was some big milestone news for the PS4. Did you already talk about this? Uh, no, I don't no, think we talked about it last week. Yeah, I mean, it's past 100 million in sales, uh, according to Sony. That's some big fucking shit. Well, you know what's crazy? Took a while. <laughs> it's crazy that that's a big number, even though, like, that's probably the lowest number for, uh, for a console generation winner ever. Um, uh, well, it's not over this console generation, but it's pretty much over. Uh, next year, there's gonna be within the next year, year and a half, there'll be a new console. I mean, the, sure. the new console generation is gonna start next year. Yeah, but I think so. Last gen, uh, or yeah, depending on who you ask, last gen, the, the we had a hundred. You know, so that was the winner. Yeah, more than a hundred. I think it was hundred. No, no, no. It was, I'm pretty positive it's a hundred, either a hundred or hundred and one. All right, I'll look it up. Okay. Uh, right. What generation console are we in right now? <laughs> the, the PlayStation like is the fourth. Eight? Well, I'm just thinking. Of, I'm like looking up generation eight gaming console and like. We can go back for if you're talking about Atari. Well, seven. We're in eighth right now. If you talk about like Atari or something like that, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, 100, right? Or 101? Right in there? Or am I tripping? No, no, I'm looking at the current generation. Oh. But the Xbox One also has 100 million. No way, Xbox that doesn't seem right. One. Oh, shit. Yeah. Okay, holy shit. That's fucking embarrassing. Yeah. Okay. Oh, no. I'm oh, sorry. That was 10. So they, they have 39 million. So, yeah, they definitely won this. But where the fuck is the... You don't see the Wii on there? They don't have the Switch on here. This is the Wii U. Oh. Oh, the Switch is on here. Okay. Yeah, it's the second one. Yeah, the Switch is actually doing pretty good. At 36 million, because they, they came in way later. Yeah, they came in like 17, but did, did you get the, the Wii? No, no, I'm going back to generation. But anyway, so uh, according to Sony, this was like uh, the first time ever where they had their digital sales actually outpaced their um, their like Hard. actual hardware or uh, actual uh, case space, disk mm, space yeah, yeah. sales or whatever. Mm-hmm. I think that's fucking impressive. That you know? is pretty impressive. But I think that's kind of where the generation's going now. I think sure. people are more moving to digital. Because I, I can't even the last time I bought a fucking game. Oh, yeah, the you're right. Sorry. The, the, the Wii did sell 101. Oh. PlayStation outsold the uh, PlayStation 4, which is kind of amazing. Uh, the Game Boy and Game Boy Color, 118. The, the DS, which people always underestimate. Oh, it sold like hotcakes. Yeah, yeah it does 154 million. And Damn. Then the PS2. 155 million. That was, man. A lot of people just use that also as a DVD player as well. Yeah, so the uh, PS4 is doing really well. Yeah. It wasn't a cheap DVD player, though. Well, the I think PS3 or the, PS2. The PS3 would have done higher sales, but there was a high cost when it came out. Oh, it was, yeah. it was super. That high. was the worst launch I've ever fucking seen in yeah, recent history. It was way too fucking high. It was like, what, $600, $600 yeah. or something like that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we don't know what these other consoles are going to cost either. Mm-hmm. There's some stuff going on and tariffs and rumors about things being higher than we would like well, as well. The, the tariffs, are, I think they're going to stop soon because uh, I don't know if y'all pay attention to the Wars today. Oh, because it dropped 800 points? Yep. Did you know why? Did no, you? I didn't see why. I know something about something that Trump did. Uh, or his party did. It is sort of tied to him, but sort of not. So they had, like, there's a, a yield, like, uh, ratio they have that comes out. And apparently there's like a red there's a red flag that happens when it goes when the yield goes below a certain amount mm-hmm. and it has to do with uh, the way you do your investments so especially with bonds so basically what happens is what's up yeah the bond yield so the bond yield so when you do bonds um, if you do bonds traditionally um, you do it for a certain amount of time and the longer you do your bond for the higher yield you have traditionally so say if you have like a one-year bond you'll get like maybe a, a percent back in that year bond and if you have like a two-year bond you get like two percent back all right so basically what a bond is is that they hold your money for a certain amount of time Mm -hmm. and they give you a certain percentage back with your along with your money 
what happened, which is like almost always a precursor to a recession, is that the 10-year bond was had a, a worse yield than a two-year bond mm-hmm. for like a brief moment in time. And once they once people saw that happen, everybody started dumping everything. And that's when the stock market dropped like 800 fucking points. Yep. Because it's always been, in history, it's always been a precursor to do a recession. Because what people are saying is that they're so worried about their money is that they're not willing to put it into a bond because they're, wor- they're worried that their money in a 10-year bond would yield them less money than it would in a two-year bond. Yeah, and we're also well past overdue. You, usually yeah. recessions happen every s- 6 to 12 years or so. Well, it's, not even that we're over- it's not even that we're overdue. It's that the fact that our current president is, has been doing everything that he can to cover up all the bullshit that's been happening in America. Like, he keeps asking the Fed to drop their rates, which is great for homeowners, but it's not great for your fucking savings account. I think it's even beyond that. I mean... <laughs> when we're talking about which don't do it. We're, we're also seeing a trade war with the yeah, second largest economy the in the on the planet, and they're they have time on their hands. They you know they don't have any election coming up soon, um, yeah. and when you put tariffs on shit, and this is what people a lot of people don't fucking realize. It's more expensive. When you look at the comprehensive aspect of the economy, when you add these tariffs, the jobs here in America, the ones you save, you're paying a lot more, a lot of times like a million dollars per employee, and there's less spending power in the U.S. for higher priced goods. It, it It actually ends up hurting your economy the more tariffs you have free trade from almost every single economist on the planet is something that is promoted as being better economically yeah, long and term. What I think this is what's sad about our current president is that he does he's a businessman, but he doesn't seem to understand like how business works. <laughs> he seems to think that when you put in tariffs it'll bring jobs back to America, but no it won't because we're we're automating away jobs. Like all these jobs that he's trying to bring back, like factory jobs, they're non-existent. Like all these jobs that he thinks that he's trying to bring back and he's trying to like prop up, every single one of them is automating away manual labor jobs. And the jo- and we're we're the highest GDP country in, in the in the world by far. But and he thinks that uh, companies won't leave. Which they probably won't, but at a certain point they will. If you keep making it, if you keep making it so that other countries can't basically invest in America and sell their goods in America, and it's not just goods, it's like ba- it's goods, but it's basic shit like steel, fucking electronics, shit like that. Like all your Android phones, they're made in fucking another country. Korea. Your Apple phones, made in another country. Every electronics, every electronic thing that you have is basically made in another country. If you want to be made in America, you're gonna pay a fucking premium price. Your fucking smartphone will cost like five thousand dollars. Yep. Going back to consoles coming out next year, and there's, the industry is afraid as fuck. You know, at Xbox and Sony, like, hey, this could be terrible for business. We talk about the PS3 having a bad launch be. with yeah. being six hundred dollars at launch. If you fuck around too badly with these tariffs and shit with China, you could talk about a three thousand, four thousand dollar console yeah. very quickly, easily. very easily, yeah. and there won't be a, a start to a next gen. Yeah, it, and it doesn't make sense. I mean, you you can negotiate, you know, whatever things that you want, but you don't start a negotiation by taxing somebody, basically, like by by throwing in extra fees onto the imports. And those tariffs are very hard to reverse. Yep. Like, have, do you know about the, the chicken tax thing? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I heard so, about that one. I'm sorry, real quickly, one of the best shows on all of this, I love on CNN, uh, Fareed Zakaria. Yeah, Zakaria. Yeah, yeah, his really his GPS. Yeah. He gives a pretty good breakdown of it. That's where I heard about it. But go ahead. He's probably the most fair dude that I know of. But the chicken tax thing that I heard of was actually from uh, Doug DeMuro. Hmm, okay. He talked about it. He's a, a car guy. And he was talking about there was a... Uh, 
it was actually a mini uh, a mini Cooper, but it was like a van. Yeah. And the reason why it didn't sell good in America is because they had, they had the chicken tax. Mm-hmm. Because it was a van that had like a partition in it, and they had to have a, I think it was like a 25 to 30 percent tax extra onto this vehicle that it's small as shit that they had to add on this chicken tax to. Yeah. And it was that was a tariff that they added that they had way back in the day they can't fucking reverse because yes. they couldn't compete with uh, Chinese people well, I think it was with China right mm-hmm. with their chickens and it's, it's so fucking stupid you here's the thing we're all one way or another consumers you want to cheap as shit it, 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 if it's a whether it's a, a, a DS or a, a Switch or a PS4 or clothing shoes they're not making Nikes in, in America. No. That's just never going to fucking happen. No. They're not going to make PS4s in America. That's never going to happen. You're not saving mm-hmm. U.S. manufacturing jobs with this bullshit. <laughs> U.S. manufacturing is basically fucking done. Yeah. It, it really is. Like, people don't want to talk about bringing jobs back to America. You are not bringing back fucking factory jobs. It's already been proven. Like, with, uh, I think it was, what, Carrier, the Ace, their conditioning company. President Trump talked about, you know, investing into them and, like, like having saving jobs in in in, uh, in carrier, but they gave us money to carrier, an air conditioning company, mm-hmm. and they took that money and they invested it into automation, because automation is way cheaper than investing in people. Well, and the reason that they have to do things like invest in automation is because the products produced at the lowest cost for air conditioning units are in. Asia, mm-hmm. and their prices, if they're on the market here, yeah. will destroy anything. That really would. It, it, you know, you, who wants to pay for the same product three hundred dollars more? Yeah, nobody. nobody. And I think what most people don't understand is that the, the the reason why you can get these low prices in America is only because America lives basically in a world of debt, mm. and we buy we buy so much money. Like that's why we sit. This is the highest GDP country in the world because we out spend everybody else because we have all these credit lines and most people in America I would say probably like 80% or more than that are in debt oh absolutely I mean technically I'm in debt it's yeah. debt that I can pay yeah. but I'm in debt but the other thing is China as a country has a lot of US dollar debt they you do, know? but but they but they can't call it in. Yeah, because it'll hurt them. I, I get yeah, that. Yeah, way worse. But yeah. you keep it, dicking around. Look, they could. Mutual, you know, mutually assured destruction well, can well, happen. Oh, they. Uh, you see that they're not um, too friendly even on in, with what's going on in Taiwan right now. Yeah, uh, China can strong arm some shit and throw their entire big dick energy into. Uh, people who don't agree with them. Let's yeah, just say that they can, and they will. They will win. This is a. Uh, this is kind of crazy. This is like probably the most educational episode you've heard of Black and Black mm-hmm. community. But uh, this is. I didn't know. Well, actually, I didn't know that you knew about shit like this. Uh, I love this stuff. I, 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 I do too. <laughs> I, I told you, yeah, because I, I pay attention to all this shit. This is why I believe in Andrew Yang. Oh, no, we gotta talk about that. <laughs> so I almost think this should be a separate podcast, but we can talk about it right now. Okay, but so you're a big supporter of him. I am a big supporter of Andrew Yang. Okay, yeah. so and I'm not a Democrat. I, I voted for fucking President Bush Jr. twice. Okay, I, I've, I'm literally in the as middle as you can probably get. But didn't, right. didn't some um, um, I'll break it down. Was it Joe Rogan that came out and said he's party neutral or something like that? He is too. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. And, he, and he is. But mm-hmm. yeah, I know I'm here. You've expressed that you value both military and political experience quite a bit. Yes. Okay. Yes. So yes. help help me understand. Okay, though, cause, help me understand. So he doesn't seem to have any, right? No, no, no. He he does. He is not. He's never been in the military. He's an entrepreneur. Hundred percent. Okay. Um, my dream. Uh, position for him will be to have him or to- him or Tulsi Gabbard. Either either one of them being president or vice president, I okay. want them to both be on the same team. Well, let's go back. Well, we'll come back to her. But for Yang, though, help help me get the experience part. That, you've said that that's important. His experience, as far as like military goes, Mil- I thought military and political experience was important. Okay, so his mil- military experience is very important to me. So the thing was, I, I had to throw those kind of out of the window because of what he his signature proposal is. Andrew Yang's signature proposal is called the Freedom Dividend, which is basically universal basic income, which if you're not familiar with that, basically what he's what he wants to do is start everybody from, he wants to raise the floor of America, of like your income. So his proposal is to give every single American 
a thousand dollars a month. So that's you know twelve thousand dollars a year yep. to like raise the, the floor of Americans. And uh, it's a proven thing that works. Um, they've done it in Alaska. They've done it in other countries. And there's he's explained the way to pay for it. And it's basically, it's basically through tech dollars. And the reason why he has this idea is because this is something I knew for a long time, but I didn't know how to resolve it because I work in tech and I've already seen the automation train coming. Right. I'm further from the automa- automation train as you can probably get at this point in time mm. because I deal in data storage and the, what I do is it's complicated and it's, it is varied. Okay. But for a lot of people that they might not realize, if you have a menial labor task, you can get automated away easy as fuck. And it's already happened here in America. Like, we've seen underwriters get fucking automated away. We've seen um, fast food workers get automated away. Truck drivers are, truck drivers are about to get to. It's another mm-hmm. one. That's a lot of jobs. And that, that and that cascades. If you have truck drivers get automated away, that affects more than just truck drivers. It affects fucking truck stops. It gas affects stations. Gas stations. All that shit. It's just fucking gone. And that's, that's millions of jobs alone. I agree. All right, and so his solution was to have the universal basic income or the freedom dividend is to basically have a stopgap between, um, you know, automated jobs and you finding a new job or finding something else that may not may not pay as well, but you have the UBI to sub to substitute your lost income. And, and the problem is this is the main problem came in, came in because. Places like Amazon and mm-hmm. Google and Facebook, all these huge tech companies, they are eliminating jobs faster than they are creating new jobs. Oh, and this no, is for the, certain. For this certain. Is the, this yeah. is the first time in human history, which I don't think most people understand, that this is the first time that we've actually automated away more jobs than we can replace. Yeah. Uh, which is scary. I, yeah. I, I've said this in the past before to people that I knew, and I'll say it again, that nobody complained when the cotton gin got like no slave complained when the cotton gin was created because nobody gave it to you because that was a bullshit job that a person should not be doing mm. people are doing it now though because people are complaining that my fast food job is getting replaced by a computer but these are jobs that you shouldn't fucking have because it, it is a job that is literally so simple that a computer could do it or it's something that shouldn't be run by humans anyway and his solution is to use UBI to have a stopgap because um, Amazon especially, they're, they're going to close down 30% of every single mall and retail store in the country, and they are not at all replacing those jobs. It's already in the works. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's been in the works, and it, what makes it worse is once they hire people, Amazon, they're just replacing them with, with robots. More and more and more, they're going towards automation, which is good for humanity. And in the long run, if you do something like UBI or the Freedom Dividend, whatever you call it, you have to have some sort of income for these people. I try to give the example to most people that are not nerds, which I realize if you're not a nerd, you won't understand this fucking concept. But if you watch Star Trek and you're a huge Trekkie, you understand what I'm saying? In Star Trek, nobody got paid anything because they all realize at a certain point, it's ridiculous because they're all working towards the same goal. And this is what automation is supposed to do. Yeah. Right? Automation is supposed to make it so that us humans don't do this menial labor bullshit. And we should be able to find another way to supplement our basic needs. I got you. And, but most people don't understand that. I'm oh, sorry. Did you want to get in, Blue? I'm not in me. Okay. Um, I'm not against any of those ideas per se. I just wanted to make sure I understood that it sounds like you like his platform yes. more so than his resume on paper, right? I mean... Okay. No, no, no. That's, that's totally fair. I mean, we could talk about Andrew Yang's background. He, he is an entrepreneur. Yeah. He started up uh, Venture, Venture for America. He's been... He's, he's actually on... Uh, not the board. He actually worked with Barack Obama. So he's been in the White House before as like an advisor yeah, for the, Barack Obama. The only distinction I just want to make though is, and, and this is maybe my, maybe it's only my distinction, but be critical as you want. Yeah, that's fine. I, I, no, I, I'm, I'm just trying to be clear. 
without having you know again mili direct military experience uh, yeah. or direct political experience where you've ran for office and won is something where we we've, we've only had that with our current president yeah yeah so i totally understand that so our current president is obviously not good uh andrew yang i think i think is a better person the military experience thing that's why i brought up uh tulsi gabbard which which if he gets the nomination i would very much hope that he would have tulsi gabbard as the vice president because she is anti-war and i'm fucking 100% anti-war Especially at this point in time after seeing like both sides you served and you've been on the war field battlefield so. yeah, yeah. And, and I've been on the side where I saw like the legit corruption with the reason why we're still going to war it's just for money for contracts and shit like that so you think basically her being on the underside of the ticket might be able to supplement his uh, his lack of, yes. of that yeah okay exactly Which so is fair. that's what I want to see um, but as far as like his lack of um, political experience, I think that it's a good thing, because I think a lot of these politicians, they just... he, he He's only shown one dick moment that I've seen his entire... And this is only recently. This is, like, literally like, maybe three days ago, five days ago, yeah. where he talked a lot of shit about uh, President Trump being fat, which is actually really <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> like, uh, if you Google uh, Andrew Yang, President Trump fat, he, like, literally trolls this dude for, like, two minutes straight about him being fat he's and how he dude. can't do shit. And how intellectually and physically he can't do anything that he can do. Which is funny. But that's, like, the most negative thing I've seen him do. Normally, in all his debates, he has not been negative towards anybody else. He's, he's avoided craftily um, asking... Like, he's, they've literally asked him, like, legit questions on CNN, if you watch CNN debates, to like, they try to make him attack other opponents, and he like craftily like just avoided it, and came with like legit solutions. I'm not saying he's not politically savvy at all. I, I just usually again, presidential history has told us that besides where we are right now, that you've had. And Barack, fair enough. Barack Obama had very little experience, yeah. but he was a senator. He did get, you know, he did run that campaign. Right. But the, the main thing with Andrew Yang is that he is—he's the only candidate that is talking about a problem that is going to affect the vast majority of people in America Come that no other candidate is talking about. That the automation problem is far more important than fucking climate change, far more important than your fucking health care, far more important than fucking any other issue. If you're not getting fucking paid, what the fuck are you gonna do? I know I I hear you. I hear you on its importance. I don't think that it can has to be we're going way down the rabbit hole. Sorry. Yeah, I'm just, I'm it, it, doesn't, it doesn't have to be something that is exclusive to him. I don't I, I think usually what we've seen in a lot of um, before the candidate has been what a quote unquote selected is that certain key issues that are good points get yeah. brought, you know, into the main fold sometimes and sometimes not of uh, of other candidates. Hopefully it can be brought up. Well, some of them kinda have I think um, um, what is the girl's name? Woman's name. I'm sorry. She was a. Uh, uh, Talking about Warren? Oprah Winfrey's uh, uh, spiritual advisor. Joe Gil She's actually really interesting. Jill. Jill. No. I know who you're talking about. Though. No, not, not Jill Brand. It's uh, something with an M. Yeah. And she's actually what she says is actually really interesting. But she's the only, she's the, another person that that's bringing up interesting issues. But she's sort of like. I don't want to say hippy dippy, but it's she's sort a spiritual of, advisor. I mean, there's going to yeah. be some level of hippy dippy with her. But she says real shit. Yeah. Like she, what she says is real shit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, for him to like bring up these issues and know the can other candidates are they're talking about bullshit talking points that don't mean shit. Like when when they brought up like climate change, they're talking about all this shit that doesn't really fucking matter. Listen, if if you're a climate change denier. Then you're not even in this conversation. Mm. Climate change is happening. Shit's getting hotter. For whatever reason, whether you, whether you want to believe it or not, what we do is important. Sure. Right. We we cannot stop it at this point or reverse it. That's what it's looking like. That's what the scientists are saying. Yeah. <laughs> and and that's that's his this, that's what he said too. Like we can't stop it right now or reverse it. Might be able to slow it down, but at the same time, America. This is what's weird about America. All these fucking stupid ass other Democratic candidates are talking about all this shit to stop climate change or to like affect it, but we literally only compromise 15% of all the emissions in the world. Yeah. So why the fuck are you even talking about this shit? Wow, it's that low, huh? Yeah, 15? it's you can look it up. It's 15%. And you wonder why? Because we've been on the forefront of this shit for the fucking longest time. 
an American person is the one who figured out that we should take lead out of gas. Yeah. And that's because they saw it wasn't even a, a scientific fucking study. This guy just happened to see that, hey, we put lead in our gas. There's way more lead right now in our fucking oceans. Can we probably stop putting lead in gas? They stopped doing that. We, the America's at the forefront for renewable energy and uh, cars running on batteries, like with Tesla. But at the, in the meantime, if you look at all the other fucking candidates, they want to seem like America's responsible for 100% of the goddamn emissions in, in the world. And we're not. Well, we're, we're not. But I will say this, to be fair. I think America's influence, because we are, you know, the big dog from a superpower standpoint, we have the ability to flex our political capital in other countries uh, if if um, strategically applied. Yeah, that's what I said. That's a fair point, but you have to come at it strategically. Like you can't just you have to come out there and you have to sit at the table. Sure. What our current president is, he's not sitting at the table. Yeah. He's yelling from the fucking kids' table. Yeah. But I, I would like to see the U.S. I and mean, me personally, I would like to see the U.S. leading on things. I, I get you on the fact well, that we're we, the, we were, but we uh, at the same time sitting at the table and like controlling the table is two different things. Yeah, I'm not saying they have to control everything, but I think that there's. I mean, I think we're saying the same thing. U.S. can influence a lot. We, we got a lot of resources. We got, like, Wakanda. We got spies in every country. <laughs> well, no, but, but we have to be friends. And yeah. that's, that's what I like about Andrew Yang is because he's talking about actually uh, repairing our current political ties yeah, yeah. around the world. You, and our current president is nothing like you, that. You mean not pissing off every member of NATO talking yeah. shit? Yeah, and it's also, <laughs> like, you know, getting all these, all, out of all these bullshit wars and, like, re- reducing our old, like, America, listen. <laughs> all this like fucking, Mac. Can I look at? I look, I look at one of both these cameras. All right, listen. All these wars that we're going to. This is your fucking money. Mm-hmm. All your taxes. You wonder why your fucking property taxes are so high. Why your fucking general federal taxes are so high. All this bullshit. They're going towards bullshit OCO funds for wars. All right, a lot of this shit. More than even the generals who are supreme war hawks. What? Yeah, like, way more. <laughs> here's, here's additional money for tanks and stuff than more than you even asked for. I have said it on this podcast before, and I will say it again because people don't seem to understand this shit. I am one person, all right? I got in the military in like what, 20. About 20 years 2003, ago. 2003. You I got start. out? Yeah. yeah. I got out the Marine Corps in 2003. I did a job that I could have done back when I was in the military in like. But 2007, I think, is when I first started doing contracting. Yeah. All right. When I went to Iraq the first time, they paid 1.2 million dollars for me. 1.2 million dollars. When I was in the military, yeah. I could I could do the same fucking job for like 33 thousand dollars. <laughs> 33 fucking thousand dollars a year. All right. Listen, for just one person yep. for one year, 1.2 million dollars. That's how much money we're fucking wasting on a fucking person. You, <laughs> you hear horror stories about like 10 thousand dollar toilet seats and screws and, that's and whatnot, legit. and all of it's legit. And, and then. That's legit. It. Literally just lost trillions of dollars. And I know how they lost it. I literally know how they lost it. And it's fucking bullshit. And they're, they're bullshitting the American people to thinking that, oh, we're all is debt, but we're literally wasting money towards these corporations. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, my internet isn't as fast as South Korea. I what wonder the why. Fuck? Yeah, what I the wonder fuck? why. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, the same bridges when I go over, like, what is it? Not A Street. There's a, bri- there's a fucking bridge in San Leandro. Yeah. They go over all the fucking time when I go back from the comic shop. Yeah. There's constantly in fucking disrepair. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's always fucked up. I'm just like, dude, what the fuck? California should have high speed rail as well. I'm yeah. Good. All right. Uh, that, was a, that was a very educational, political. Why did you mean you should do a fuck, we should do a fucking podcast? I'm all, you know I'm always fucking down. <laughs> <Yeah. out. laughs> what the fuck am I going to do? Because I'm in the middle. I think you're, you're pretty near the middle. Yeah, I mean, look, I. I I'm. I can listen to reasonable arguments on all types of things, and there's times when I've flipped and fucking flopped too. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's. You know what's the problem? The problem that I have with that shit. People say flipping and flopping. Flipping and flopping is a fucking bullshit term. Listen, if if you if you are privy to new information, you have you should always reserve the right to change your goddamn mind. Yeah. 
I, I say that shit all the time. I, I still don't understand why we still have political parties because it it shouldn't be. You should be voting based off your political party. You should be basing off of educational like knowledge or shit that you hear, so, not just. Hold nice. on, this is all fucked up to me. All right, so listen, I finally registered to vote after the first time in like since Bush Jr. Really? Yeah, I was, I was done with like voting whatsoever. Oh, wow. Okay. So today when I did my I renewed my uh, my license and all that shit, I actually registered to vote for my current residence. Mm-hmm. And I put in no party, and they said that if you check no party, you may not be able to vote for a certain party. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, like the primaries, right? Yeah, for the primary. I'm like, what the fuck yeah, are you yeah. talking about? And that changes from state to state. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, if you're in Arizona, it's completely different. But I'm still checking no, bitch. Yeah. I'm still checking no. Well, this, right. this is fucking wrong. This is another part that's wrong with the political aspect of America. It's like, if I have no political party... You should not restrict who the fuck I can vote for. Exactly, yeah. I agree. Yeah. Th- that's why I bring that up because I remember when I when I went to renew my license, I had the same issue where it's like yeah. I want to check no party, and it said like, oh, if you check no party, then you can't participate in like political d- elections or some shit. Yeah, fuck that. Um, this is another thing I gotta bring back to Andrew Yang. Okay. Because most people think, most people that hear his name, because they always boast about his UBI thing or his freedom mm-hmm. dividend thing, thousand dollars a month. Yeah. He has over a hundred policies. Which that he's proposing, excellent. and one of them is is like giving every American uh, freedom dollars, and so what he wants to do is he wants he wants to dilute the um, the lobbyist dollars. I like that. So he, he will give every American a hundred freedom dollars to give towards whatever candidate they want to. Cool. And so that that way they dilute because we have what. Uh, probably over 200 million uh, um, uh, adult Americans. Yeah, that sounds about right. Right, that's about right. Roughly, yeah, probably take, a little less. Right. All right, so that that's a shitload of money. So if you give them all 100 dollars to where they want to donate, so I donated to Andrew Yang, first person I ever donated to ever. Wow. I donated to him twice. Put your money where your mouth is. I really did. <laughs> and so his idea was to give everybody a hundred uh, dollars that they wanted to use, use it or lose it. Okay. So if you, if you didn't use it towards anybody, it just goes back into whatever fucking fund. Yeah. But you use it towards whoever you wanted to con- contribute to, and this would v- drastically reduce the amount of lobbyists because you would totally dilute how much money they could spend. Hey, fuck them lobbyists. Fuck them kids too. Fuck them all. He <laughs> did it in a way that's fucking genius because you're not you're not making lobbyists illegal, but you're diluting them through the people. Yeah, taking away some of that power. So yeah, you or you can't have more. You're taking away the <laughs> the political power that the corporations have by donating money to the person yeah, swaying you know. swaying how the shit corporations happens. are bullshit. They somehow gave them the, the the same rights as a person, which is literally what they have, but you cannot sue them as a person. Yeah, and it's fucking bullshit. Can we go back to something? And we're on really good topics. Here. I love this fucking stuff. I want to go back to something from last week, and I had to cut my own self off short because I left like halfway through. Oh yeah, you missed my announcement. Wait, what was your fucking announcement? Uh, uh, you know, me and Sweetie oh, oh, have a house. Oh yeah, congratulations. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Um, but I want to be clear on this, and I, I, I want to just make sure that. Again, my thinking has historical context and everything. So, can you elaborate really briefly and succinctly on why you feel that? And I guess an assault rifle ban will lead directly to a civil war? I know, because you've said it a few times, I thought, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, the reason why is because uh, how would you uh, implement a, an assault rifle ban? Well, okay, so I thought that there was a federal assault rifle ban prior, right? Uh, yes and no. So I think people don't understand what an assault rifle ban really means. Can I can I break down what it means? Sure, go ahead. Right. I gotta look it up again. So I, I remember like the first three, but I was I always forget the fourth. What is it? I thought it was about how many a, a rifle with the, uh, the amount of no. rounds nope. per minute. Well, that's one. No, that's not nothing to do with rounds per minute. Okay. It's how many uh, ammunitions in a cartridge, nope. right? Not nope. that either. Not okay. that either. So, so what so is it? Up? Most stop. Americans do not understand what the fuck it means, and it. Well, most people say an assault rifle ban. It happens to do with like the uh, California specifically how they have our assault rifle ban. Our assault rifle ban. And I'll, I will, but wasn't there a federal ban though? There was a federal ban, but it's basically it was based on the California ban. Okay. And for that ban though, and I, I know you're looking up some stuff here. Did did something happen that made people like? Lead towards uh, militias, or what? What was the result, or was it just not wide scale enough 
No, no, let me break down to you right now. Hold on, hold on. I'm looking at we Wikipedia. Um, I've been oh, drinking, yeah. and uh, it's been... So that's just California, I think. Yeah, no, because this is what most people go... This is where most of them go back to. Okay. It's for the California uh, I destination thought, of a song, right? I thought there was a federal one, too. There was a federal one, but it's the same one that married the California one. Okay. All right, so it is. Uh, this is going to be surprising for most of you because it is not automatic. AR does not mean automatic. It's yeah. armor light rifles. What it means because they're the person that made the weapon. Okay. All right. So uh, it means a semi-automatic center fire rifle. Semi-automatic, which does not mean fucking automatic. Yeah. Semi-automatic means each time you pull the trigger, another bullet comes out. All right. Uh, that has the capacity to accept the detachable magazine and any of the following. A pistol grip that protrudes conspicuously beneath the action of the weapon, a thumbhole stock, a folder of telescoping stock, a grenade or flare launcher, which is obviously, that one's fucking ridiculous, uh, a flash suppressor, which is also ridiculous, and a forward pistol grip. These are all things, except for um, the grenade launcher, all the other things on there are to better control the weapon. Okay. And there's nothing to do with like the rate of fire, nothing to do with automatic. But I thought they said the semi-automatic is, is the, isn't that the rate of fire or am I tripping? No, well semi-automatic has nothing to do with the rate of fire. Oh, okay. Ed educate me on, I Every single pistol that you fight in your life has been semi-automatic. Semi okay, they're not, okay, so they're, a revolver is single shot though, right? No, it's, sing it's semi-automatic. All the ones that you shot, I'm pretty sure it's single automatic. When you shot uh, a revolver, how'd you shoot it? I cocked back and pulled the trigger, and, and then I had to cock back. No, you don't. Modern semi modern semi-automatics, you don't have to cock back the the hammer every single time. You shoot, 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 shoot. You can cock it back once if you want. So for a revolver, I'm sorry, I'm not well, it's uh, you're tripping. Listen, with this. Uh, let me just, okay. I'm looking up right now. Semi-automatic is uh, it's it's called a semi-loading firearm or auto-loading firearm, which meaning that when you pull the trigger, another bullet pops into the chamber. Yes, that's what I was saying. For for a revolver or any any goddamn handgun, uh, when you pull back the hammer mm -hmm. and you go to shoot down, most the reason why most people do that is because it's for most handguns. I'm not gonna say all. Most handguns, when you pull the hammer back. It reduces the amount of pull on the trigger. Okay. It makes it shorter. So you can shoot somebody faster. That makes sense. Yeah. But the remaining uh, bullets in the firearm, you can just keep shooting. But it's per trigger. That's per trigger pull. Okay. Yeah, it's been a while since I've been shot a revolver. But. Yeah, because if you pull the trigger, usually the hammer pops back by itself and yes. then Okay. Returns. That's why it's semi-automatic. I think that's why most people... People in America, they're ignorant of on how firearms work. Most people in America that don't own firearms are ignorant of how they work. Okay. You know, and uh, assault rifles that you hear about in the media, they are not, they're usually not automatic. The no, assault, no, they're not automatic. The assault rifle term is kind of a bullshit term because there's no really such thing as an assault rifle. What would a... AR-15 be better classified as? It's a rifle. It's a semi-automatic semi -automatic rifle. Okay. All right. Was... Wouldn't a AR-15 or, let's say, an AK-47 be excluded from the bans that have happened? It, here it, in California, no. They're not excluded. Okay. Here in California, they're not excluded. Because I just told you the, the definitions, right? So uh, a normal AR-15 has a pistol grip. So this is this is what what's complicated. This is where it kind of gets into bullshit territory. Because an AR-15 always, always has a pistol grip. Sure. Right? So you have to, like... Yeah, you have to like modify things to be California legal. Sure. And I think it's like you have to reduce it to like two or three definitions in the assault rifle. So the detachable magazine in in California, you have to have like a, a key to detach okay. the magazine. Fair enough. Which is kind of dumb. And we also have the, the ten magazine limit. Oh, the, I'm sorry, the ten round limit. But just to be clear on what I said though. So an AK-47 would has never been banned though with. Assault rifle bans? That's what. Well, technically speaking, yes, but if you uh, can get it underneath the laws I just said, then so no. With, oh, so with, oh, I, I hear you on modifies. modifications, yeah. but 
the traditional one pre-modification sounds like it would be banned. That's that's what I'm trying to get to. Well, see, this is the problem, though, is that an AK-47, to me, is is no, it's not that much, that much more different from, like, a 30 out 6 Okay. It's really not. I guess I'm still trying to get to the... What did get banned? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is the this is the problem that most people have that they don't understand. I, I read to you the definition of an assault rifle, but I'm still going back to what got banned. That that's what my que- question then. What did get banned? Well, not with, not, I don't think necessary. So it banned. sounds like you're saying nothing got banned, or it's just things with these certain characteristics that I just said. So which which ones fell into those? That's what I'm trying well, to get. Only a few is that the pistol grip that produced conspicuously beneath the magazine of the weapon, a thumb hole stock, uh, a fully or telescoping stock, uh, a grenade launcher, or a, fi- a flare launcher, which is that one. Obviously, you should not have a grenade launcher on your fucking weapon. <laughs> uh, I told you with that. And a flash suppressor, which is also that one's bullshit too. And a four pistol grip, which is also kind of uh, redundant. So if a, if a gun has those characteristics, then it's it's a banned gun. But if you remove those items, you can use that gun yes, legally. And, and that's how you do it in, in California. That's what they do. Mm, okay. They have ways around it. So it's not those necessary. Modifications. It's not necessary the right. weapon that's the gun that's banned. It's the modifications that's on the weapon. Well, no, it's it's not. <laughs> There's firearms that fall in that category. That that's how they're made. Yeah, yeah, they're except for the grenade launchers. <laughs> this is so fucking dumb. When I say grenade launchers, listen. If you look at the front of a fucking AR-15, I'm sorry. Uh, the barrel? An AR-16. Like so, what I shot when I was in the military. That's like the military version, right? The AR-16. Mm-hmm. There's like a little. It's like literally a little fucking nub in the f- front. Okay. That you can attach something to. It didn't come with a fucking grenade launcher, but you can add an attachment sure, to it. It's like a modification. Yeah, but no, they, none of them came with it. Okay. Aftermarket. Fair enough. Yeah. I get that. No, I get that. But an attachment. Yeah. I get. It's it. a two or three attachment, is what it's called, which I've, I've shot. It's fun. Bullshit up. Okay. Explosions. We've gotten way down into the weeds. Yeah, man. Keep going. I'm, I, I'm glad you're talking about this. I'm just trying to understand. Well, you, well, I want to. Well, is I want there to, a small list of a few that, besides, I know you keep saying grenade launcher, but is there a small list of ones that did fall into? I'm not talking about modifications. That fell into. These are no longer allowed. Yeah. So the AR-15 unmodified definitely fell into that, and okay. and AK-47 definitely fell into that as well. There's a, there's a, there's a bunch of them other okay. ones as well. See, that's fair. that's what I'm tra- I was trying to get yeah, to. Yeah, no, okay. that's that's good. I, I, I'm glad that we can educate, I guess. Yeah. But at the same time, like most of the things that are on the assault rifle like list mm-hmm. are things that do not make it more dangerous. They make it less controllable. I'm fine with that. Go I'm, on. Let me just explain it to somebody. Just somebody that's listening to the podcast that, that has never shot a gun before, mm-hmm. they might not understand what I was just saying. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go down line by line. A pistol grip that protrudes conspicuously beneath the action of the weapon, that makes it easier to control because when you're shooting a firearm, you want to have a, a firm hand on what the fuck you're shooting, and that's a pistol grip. Sure. All right? So and that, gonna... that, go on. That makes it easier to shoot. Same thing with thumb hole stock. It makes it easier to handle your weapon. A folding or telescoping... The folding one I can sort of get, because you can conceal that better. But telescoping one, I don't understand either, because it, it makes it fit easier in your shoulder, which makes it easier to shoot. It makes it easy, more controllable. A grenade launcher, obviously, that should be fucking illegal. I, I don't understand that shit at all. Because you, you can't fucking buy grenades as a civilian, so there shouldn't be on there at all. Um, a flash suppressor, it literally, a flash suppressor on an AR weapon, or most weapons, mm-hmm. it be, it's basically vents that are on the, if you look at the tip of a firearm, they're like little cut out holes at the very tip. They have at those the, in rainbow. At the, at rainbow the top. Seeds, yeah. And they're all at the top. There's four reasons, because when you shoot, you're, um, you have muscle climb, it's what they call muscle climb. And that van at the top is to like make it go back down. I, I, the only reason why I'm nodding is because li- li- this yeah. is literally in Rainbow Six, and that's where I, yeah. I they they broke that down for me. But yeah, and that's for controllability. All right, that's all it is for. And then the same thing, the four pistol grip is literally the same thing as number one as a pistol grip con- protruding, which is kind of it's a redundant fucking thing. So the shit that they're banning, it's, all con- it's it's to make it more controllable. Yeah. So the shit they're 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 banning doesn't really make sense for them to be banning. No, it's like, it doesn't. The like, gun is still dangerous. Yes, yeah. but this—if you want to say an automatic rifle ban, I'm totally fine with that. 
I'm totally fine with an uh, automatic rifle ban. That's what the guy in Vegas used, right? He had an automatic weapon? Or? Uh, well, in, in Las Vegas, it's legal. Oh, yeah, that's well, like, But you know, it's... Vegas. I'm, I'm totally for making automatic rifles illegal. And I'm also for background checks. Sure, I'm also yeah. for... Uh, Psychiatric. Like mental health check. Yeah. That's uh, goes with the background check. So what do you? Because I think it, I think it was in San Jose where the mayor is trying to campaign for, yeah. I guess some kind of insurance for gun owners or some some weird fucking rule he's trying that's to pass. Ex, that's an extra tax. But, yeah, that's, yeah, all that's all it is. Right. It's just more fucking money. Do I, do I need a tax for my fucking knife? Yeah, exactly. Which I, I hold at all times, like literally all fucking times. Pulled it out. So for those. <laughs> Yeah, I'm okay. I, first of all, I appreciate knowing more about them. I'm, I'm fine with that. It sounds like there is a still a, a, a small list that were banned um, in terms of, I'm not talking about modifications, but just banned from the California, and then there was a time period where there, were, uh, there was a federal ban. Yeah, yeah, and I think uh, a lot of that was mostly automatic weapons. Okay. And which, um, there is, there was an automatic rifle ban, automatic weapon ban, back in the day, which you can get grandfathered in, but that's like a whole different fucking uh, can of worms. Okay. Uh, but yeah, there are some weapons where you, just, you can't have them. Well, so, so here's, here's my take, though. I think as a whole, when I look at like the 20th century, I see a lot of periods where there were deeply divided things for the country. The government literally took away booze for 13 fucking years. Yep. We had a 10 year long uh, Great Depression where there was Americans starving in yeah. every area, every state had Americans starving. <laughs> Bread yeah. yeah, certainly could. But I'm just saying in terms of real tough turmoil and, and whatnot, you obviously have the civil rights passing, you have Roe versus Wade and abortion being legal, obviously still extremely divisive today. And shouldn't be, but yeah. I, no, I hear you. I'm just saying things that could ha- had the potential. I gave five events in the 20th century that had the potential uh, to, according to most historians, separate the country completely. I don't. I don't think that those those are things that uh, can be taken oh, lightly. Like, okay. Yeah. Now that we're in 2019, some people will downplay. Oh, the Great Depression. No, this was serious shit for the country. Yeah. So same with uh, uh, you know prohibition and saying literally adults cannot have booze anymore. Yeah. So I I think I understand where you're going with that. Is that you're saying like why is this a big deal? No, I'm not saying why is it a big deal. I'm just saying that the country has. Uh, overcome extremely divisive overreaches sometimes by the government on things as simple as booze or telling people, hey, you can't be overtly uh, discriminatory against uh, you know black people in terms of letting yeah. them eat at a water fountain. So that could have divi- divided the country I mean, into a civil I mean, war. Drinking at a water fountain. Yeah, I was gonna say. Or drinking, e- eating so, at a water fountain. Whatever the so fuck. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm talking about. <laughs> but the, the problem here with this one, with the with the Second Amendment shit, with, with firearms, is that if you decide to make certain firearms illegal, how are you gonna take them? I don't know how it would be done. I, I hear you on that. I'm just not convinced that America would crumble so easily. Uh, it would be a civil war. And I have very little doubt about that. Um, people in California or on in New York or most of the coast, they probably like, ah, oh, it's not a big deal. But you get to the middle of America, or v- the vast majority of guns are held. I'm not saying it wouldn't be a big deal. I'm saying this would still be a big deal. There's no doubt about it. I'm not it. even saying a big deal. It would literally be, in my in my opinion, it would be a civil war. I hear you. And and you've been real clear on that. And, I, I, and I'm a big gun advocate. I, currently, I don't own any firearms. I yeah. used to. I don't right now. I'm, I'm going to buy probably at least one for the next year or so, but... Um, yeah, because your daughter about to turn 18 soon, so you need to... <laughs> <laughs> but you need to stock up. <laughs> it's one of those things where, like, listen, if somebody wants to tell me that I don't think... If the government comes into my house and it's like, hey, I think that you don't deserve this thing you paid for, um, and it's your right, and I'm going to take it from you now, a lot of folks are going to take that in the wrong way. I'm positive you're right about that. I'm just saying, for me, historically, I see things that... It, it, hindsight is 2020, but literally before that civil rights passing happened, yeah, but or Roe versus Wade, the country very easily, and I'm sure if you go back and look at articles at the time, 
could have said, hey, this is going to cause another civil war for no, those. No, but they're not taking away the means to defend themselves. And, we're, and you're also ignoring the fact that America is a country that is built on defend like we went to war because we couldn't defend ourselves like literally that's one of the main reasons why I went to war I hear. And, and we will do it again like if, if we take the way our means to defend ourselves people will have a large problem with that it's, it, it goes deeper than you know certain other civil rights the Great Depression was basically a <laughs> The failure of capitalism, all the way around, and and it was babies starving. Now I, I hear you. I'm just if that and didn't they, cause in the Great Depression, then we're talking about guns. I, I, I hear what you're saying. I would have thought, and a lot of people did, would have thought that would have caused a civil war when I can't feed my family. Well, no. So in the, listen, the Great Depression was 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 different. So the Great Depression, from what I understand, was caused mostly by World War II. I'm oh, sorry, was it one? Mm -hmm. or no, two? no, this was pre World War II. It was one, right? It was in between World War One. Yeah, and because World we spent a lot of resources on a war, and a lot of people like put in a lot of resources into that war, and then afterwards, that's when, and we decided to start building roads and shit like that. We just we overspent, and I get that. We, you're right, that could happen again, but at the same time, they were not taking away guns at that time. So that's the reason why people kind of like. We gotta rebuild, but if you take away people's the means, the, the means to defend themselves at this point in time, it'd be disastrous to America. Like we would, I would venture to say America would not survive. I hear you. You've in, been, in, you've in been consistent. Interaction. You've been very consistent on it. I just needed to make sure I was clear on some of the things historically that I think were extremely catastrophic events in American history recently that divided the country. Yeah, I mean, there's been a, pl a plenty of things that have divided the country. I mean, like, listen, the, the NRA in its current iteration, uh, for better or for worse, was because of uh, African Americans. Ooh. Because back in the day, I think it was when the Black Panthers were first uh, doing their, we're going to open carry because it was law, because, I forget the guy's name, but he was a Bobby, lawyer. Bobby Seal and... Uh, uh, what was the lawyer's name? What was Bobby Seal? Uh, was that Eldridge Cleaver? One of his friends. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll look it up. Yeah, yeah. we'll look it up. Sorry. We're, we're not prepared for this conversation. Mm -hmm. But um, there was a lawyer that was just like, hey, we can open carry. It's our American right. Yep. And then they decided to do it. And that's when they met with, uh, fuck, was it Ronald Reagan? Yeah, over in the Capitol in Sacramento. Yeah, and they were like, hey, we're open carrying. And he was like, oh, you know what's going on? And then that's when the shit at the family were like, oh, black people are fucking open carrying weapons. And yep. it's their right. And that's when, that's when, like, America was like, or the government was like, what the fuck? Yep. Like, we need to fucking reduce these rights. And that's when the NRA was like, oh, shit. Like, if you could do it to them, you could do it to all of us. And that's yep. when NRA really kicked into, like, gun rights. Before that period of time, they didn't really give a shit. And I just want to be clear. I've said on this program many a times, I want an AA-12. So, you know yeah. what I mean? I, I'm not someone who's yeah. I'm not someone who's completely anti-gun at all. I'm I'm not. I fired some. Obviously, I don't know how re a revolver works. That's embarrassing. But fuck. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the modern revolvers. Yeah. Uh, you're uh, thinking uh, of like old school. Like, yeah. Uh, maybe I'm thinking of a Red Dead. You're like thinking of action armies. Yeah. 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 I don't know. All right. I don't, I don't know how it works. But um, but it's not that I'm afraid of them or never shot any no, or no. I'm against them. Or, we were shooting before. Yeah. yeah. And I had a fucking blast and shit. I love the fucking oh, shotguns. Nice. I remember like the, the look in your face when you first shot a shotgun. Yeah, I was like, holy shit, yeah, I can do this? So much <laughs> yeah. Anyway, sorry, we, we've gone long, god yeah, damn it. this got political. Uh, this is fun, though. This is what we need sometimes, god damn it. Well, there's something I was going to bring up real Go quick. Um, I guess it was one of Trump's political party members that what he said about the, about the Statue of Liberty. Oh God! You know, the, the classic fucking, <laughs> the classic fucking message saying that it's, it was only meant for the Europeans. Yeah, some ra l let's call things what they are. So this is blatant, yeah. racist, anti-black, anti-brown, anti-anybody but white mm -hmm. people. Shit, and, yeah, and I, people just need to be. You know what? More white folks in the GOP need to be honest and say, "Hey, that's some racist shit. We don't believe in that." Mm -hmm. uh, distance myself from them. They just need to. Yeah, this, yeah. You know, this is the mouthpiece for your your party. You're in the White House. You're in the position of power. This is anti everything American. It really is. I don't want to hear anything about it. I'm also going to say one other quick thing too. Trump very vehemently. Everybody knows that he's against Nancy Pelosi, mm -hmm. and he's very much against Hillary Clinton. Right? We all know that. 
never in any of his rhetoric against those two women. And I don't care how you feel about them one way or another. Never in his rhetoric has he ever said, said anything close to they need to go back to where they come from because they're American. You know what's yeah. the craziest part to me with that motherfucker? I call the president a motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't give a shit. This dude is literally a generation removed from wherever the fuck he came from. Yeah. His parents were immigrants to America. His wife immigrated wife. last yeah. year, like it began, or you know, the year before that, and became a citizen with yeah. the news He's, on the internet. I'm wait, I, I, I really want to like. I wish somebody would try this, but like, tip off to ISIS about a hotel <laughs> chain having a bunch of immigrants inside, and not tell them exactly what kind of hotel it is. Just say it's a hotel. I'm pretty sure ISIS could raid a Trump Tower hotel. Just Say that it starts with T and ends with MP. Yeah, I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. The, the racist shit. Look, I can I can have political disagreements with you all day long. I think those are healthy and, and great. Actually, mm-hmm. you know, we fight about issues and whatnot. When you get into, hey, fuck you because you're from here. Or, yeah. hey, fuck you, because you're, you know... Your country's or, a fucking dirt hole. Or fucking, you play to this guy. Yeah. Or, just get out of here. Yeah. Just, just uh, Sorry. Oh, did you haven't said a fucking word in like an hour. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, got, you, got, you got no opinion, bro? God. I kind of don't. God. All right. All right. Was, we're all going to burn up anyway, so yeah. fuck so it. So I'll burn up right now, but yeah, I, was really, I was talking to a, a guy the other day, uh, after you were in jiu mm-hmm. and I was trying to explain to him, like, I don't really, like... I've been to other countries, a bunch of other countries, like probably more than most people that are listening to this podcast, and I've seen like way different ways of life. And like, there's certain ways of life where the Western way does not fit, and I think that if you try to fit it in there, uh, it's fucked up. And I, I gave the example because I, I told this guy I was like, listen, I, you know, I've been to uh, Djibouti, Africa, a couple of times, and. It's like it's like the best example of like how we fucked up a country with like Western values. Like the people that are tribal, they live just fine. Mm-hmm. When they stick to their the way they've always lived, they're just fucking fine. They can provide for themselves. Yeah, they're good to go. Sustainable. You bring in Western bullshit with like money and fucking markets and all sorts of bullshit. They don't know how to operate. They're just like, what the fuck? People are poor. All the people that were not poor before that period all of a sudden have no quote unquote money. And this money thing isn't, is not for fucking everybody. Like, having a market value is not for everybody. I agree wholeheartedly, but I'll add one other thing. There are plenty of times, and most people try to ignore this history, where our government with the CIA has gone in, toppled democratically elected leaders because yep. we didn't like them. Talked about a business deal, private business deals with, you know, res- certain resources, because all wars are about resources, and done some dirty, underhanded shit all over the planet. And that's not me being anti American or anything. It's just, we got to be honest about the history sometimes when we're talking about places. And that's you know why, what I mean? That's why I like Tulsi Gabbard. That's why I want Yang and Gabbard to be on the same ticket. Yeah. Because she understands the high cost of war and she understands these stupid ass regime change fucking wars for no goddamn reason. If y'all didn't know, we're still at war with fucking Iraq and Afghanistan. Nobody talks about it. You might not it. realize it, but we are. People people are fucking dying in those countries. Both civilians, military members, and a whole bunch of other people are fucking dying in those countries every goddamn day. And it's totally buried by the media. Yeah. It, it's not headline news by any stretch of the imagination. You'd have to watch some Al Jazeera or BBC to even get a story. You know what? We got okay. Sorry. We've done. We've done. Mm-hmm. No ass with the, 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 the BTIs. We, we will do a po- we, listen. Me and you will do a podcast yeah, look, together. And we'll do- any fucking time. Yeah. We, look, we it's, we don't talk about this kind of stuff enough. No, no. The old ninja, the, the one who's been silent the whole fucking time. Um, what do you got populating this week? That's a hard transition. <laughs> yeah. <that's true. laughs> old ninja, what you got? Uh, <laughs> kids dying in the street. Uh, yeah. <laughs> dying in the street, drone strikes, <laughs> shits in, shit on the sidewalk out of San Francisco. Oh, uh, this, so this week Bump is, is, is uh, <laughs> Silicon Valley Comic Con. Oh, yeah. yeah uh, out here in San Jose. So I'm going to probably either all three days or at least two out of three days. Nice. Uh, it starts Friday night, uh, Friday afternoon. Oh, actually, no. It does start at Friday. I think at like yeah, four Friday. or something. Mm-hmm. Maybe even earlier. But I'll be there on Friday. 
um, for a little bit, and then uh, Saturday I'll probably be there most of the day. Um, it'll be Cronus's birthday celebration that night. Oh shit! So we, I'll be going to that uh, Saturday Big house for sure. Oh, sorry, okay. it's okay, called put that out there. It's <laughs> called Big, <laughs> it's called Big Owls for uh, Big Gay Owls. Oh my goodness! And then uh, I don't judge people. <laughs> yes, I do. I'm just kidding. Yeah, uh, but not gay people. Uh, Some of them. Most of them. Uh, all of them. Some of them. Uh, I guess in like an hour, Cannon Busters drops. So I'm gonna oh, watch. Yeah. At least a couple episodes or whatnot. Um, uh, I'm playing Apex Legends because they dropped the solo mode. So um, I tried twitching some out the other day. Oh, do you do battle royale? So, or, wait, oh, oh, solo against yeah. like AI? I was no, first, solo no, against, it's against you. Players. It's against other players. Oh, but you could uh, always do that, right? I was like, no, no you're in a squad player. of three. Oh, yeah. okay, so it wasn't like Fortnite in terms of they had a, a solo. Yeah, player. I, was no. so pissed. I was like, is it PVE? And I was gonna play, and I was like, oh, it's just solo versus solo. Oh, uh, like, yeah, okay. it, it's squad. <laughs> So this is this is uh, it's 60 players and you're by yourself. You have to survive against 60 other players. And uh, they opened up a new area. Not that opened up, but they added a new area on the map where you can go and get goodies and, and there's like little secrets and shit there. Um, so I'm gonna try to twitch some of that out. So this is actually kind of fun. There's a lot of good stuff. They added like a little mini like store event to do. Um, I think that's kind of about it. All right, uh, Blue, what you got popping? Uh, so if you weren't on a, if you didn't hit a podcast last week, uh, the sweetest and I got a house. So yeah, congrats, man. Doing a lot of little things around the house before we can move in. Uh, we had a few electricians come in, got some quotes. One of them fucking outrageous. But you got you no know, electricity in your new no, house? We got electricity. We just want to upgrade the, the electrical stuff. But uh, yeah, one of the quotes we got is like, God damn, we need so we need to scale back on some of our requests because. It was fifteen thousand dollars. Basically, yeah. Damn, what kind of fucking fans <laughs> you trying to do? Is it just for the box, or what else? You no, that's, that's a bunch of stuff too. So like upgrading to two hundred amps, um, and installing some recessed lights. Um, some of the rooms don't have the the the, the, the outlets aren't up to code, so they need to be brought up to code. Uh, we're adding an extra outlet in the bathroom, adding an outlet in the uh, in one of the closets because I want to make it into like a little data center, hmm. so I can have like uh, like all the electronical stuff in there. That's for yourself. Well, I don't want to get electrocuted, so no. <laughs> No, because our, our house is on slabs, so you have to go into the roof, and you have to feed the lions down, but our house used to be a flat top roof, and they built an ang uh, angle roof on top, but the hard top roof is still there, so and it's fucking tar and gravel. Okay, but... So yeah, I would need, like, a special tool if I was to drill into the into there to be able to get the lions through the walls. So I fished it, but there's ways you can do it. Like, like for, like, an outlet... Well, it's yeah. it's outside. It's like the outlet that that would be by the window. Oh, we get into yeah, shit on here. Yeah, shit that. <laughs> but um, fuck, I, I also forgot. I got a outside of SVCC. I also got a photo shoot this weekend on Saturday. I'm doing uh, another high school reunion. Some more porn, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I got that happening off too. But uh, yeah, you know, I'm just out there trying to muscle, hustle and get that money, though. Know? For real. Shit, man. Hey, you. Birthday, Kronos. What you got? Yeah, I'm turning fucking 40, y'all. Look at my I'm turning 40 on Saturday. Mm -mm -mm. It's, it's, uh, it's a little weird because I didn't expect to live this long. <laughs> but apparently I am. Here Thanks, wife. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I'm having my uh, my 40th, 40th birthday is on Saturday. I'm gonna do my traditional uh, roll because I do jujitsu. So every year for jujitsu, when I turn whatever age I am, I roll for as many minutes as many as many years as I am old. So I'll, I'll do 40 minutes straight of rolling in jujitsu, and I'll and I'll. Tr Trade out partners every couple of minutes. What's that like? like literally eight fresh. rounds, goddamn it! No, it'd be more, way more than that. Like last time, it was like probably. Well, when I was thirty-nine. It was at least ten people. Like way more than that. God, fuck it was man. probably like more like fifteen or twenty, and it's fresh people in every few minutes. It's gonna be sore as fuck for your party. I don't give a shit. Just drink more. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, it's how I try to stay young, I guess. But this time it's gonna be a little different because I've got like a serious neck injury, which I'm recovering from. I thought you were good, yeah. Well, I'm good for like day to day shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like when somebody's trying to choke me, no. Because it's right. like if I have too much like pressure on my like my head, it's just like I gotta pass. Because yeah. I, I don't want to break my fucking neck. All right. But uh. Hopefully I'll videotape it this time around so y'all can see. Oh yeah. This will be a bad time though because I'm a purple belt mm -hmm. but I'm injured so. And you're old. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> the age thing actually. Oh, that's fun. The age thing doesn't really matter. Cause no. Most people are old me. They don't even know what I'm fucking for. Like pretty much for you. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, just, I think I'm in my fucking twenties, and I'm like, really? Mm-hmm. Like I'm not in my fucking twenties. Black don't crack. Yeah, I, I guess. <laughs> I, I just, I just see fucking lotion. Just, just listen, y'all. Use lotion. All right, use lotion. You gotta go. And lube. Anal lube. Um, oh, water based. I am gonna say fuck. Uh, no, oh, silicone based. What are you talking about? Water based lube. <laughs> okay. God damn. Oh. God. What, when was the last time you had sex, bro? Oh, uh, that's classified. Uh, Queen your flashlight. Um, oh, I'm going. Uh, I am going to do a maybe a couple more hours of Days Gone and then probably say fuck that game. Definitely some Cannon Busters, goddammit. I'm very hyped. Uh, nobody's going to talk about it when Stitch gets back because he's a fucking hater. I'm hyped for this fucking Joker movie. I'm hearing nothing but good buzz on it. I hope <laughs> DC comes through. I know you hating uh, over there. I'm only, fucking I'm only hating. old ninja. I'm only hating because all your hot old and cold takes of 2019 have not really panned out for you. So I'm hoping you take another L for 2019. You didn't give, so me, like it, you didn't give me any credit. I said uh, what? That, I said that uh, Endgame would be close to three million dollars, and look at that. What yeah. does what, it's not at three million? No, it was nowhere near close to three million dollars. Three billion, yeah. billion? Two point eight. Two, yeah, it's two. Oh, yeah. Two, yeah, it's like two point eight. And it just and they're going to re-release it at some point. Uh, End, End game just dropped on Blu-ray yesterday. Yeah. For so, sure. There you go. Wrong, God damn it. Check us out. Come on. So, just check us out on the interwebs at BTHANBTI. B-T-H-A-N-B-T-I. Check out our official revamped website, binheadproductions.com forward slash BTHANBTI. Check it looks us pretty out. pretty good. Yeah. I did it. I'm just saying. It's it pretty good. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We're releasing a bunch of stuff on there. And then check us out on Facebook. On uh, YouTube, we're actually Black and the Black Times Infinity. Uh, Radio Republic, we're on there. Uh, Player Frame, Stitcher, Amazon. There's an app. And then on Apple Podcasts, we're on there too. Drive fast, eat ass. <laughs> mm, that's a no. You don't want to do this at the same time. That's, that's all bad. Sorry, I said the, the, the website saw just me, but it was actually John. He helped me out a lot. Thank you, John. There you go.